Hello there. Onda se napušna na TV, brad. Time for something, kao. Veliko je, mi biš spodeljenja, ne? Ja. Big up playing a game called Ginko. Oče, ne trimu se. Brad, ja kao se izgleda. Da, na stream sam. Ovo mu izvedaj. Spok. Viš to je back piece. Bak ti gro sam back piece. Što je za rov? Ne. Ne. Neče, viš kako je drugoc? Tos dagger. E, tos dagger mojeg pojega prešli s njekaj. Zasta špagatče koji? Ma se je mnogo pojega s njim dagger, brat. Drugoc je se zjema tu. Mnogo po bre. Mnogo viš kakav mace. Uuuu. E, tu njale je nodu... Tu njale je nodu brez za tako za tive. Za... A, 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 Ето е брутално. Ето е брутално, брат. Вау, че ето е... Аз... На макрилю, бе? Да. Ще трябва и трябва да се... Чакай, брат. Е, да, бе. Ще му на този чука глинко. На Тор. Да си буквално за вкаран. Сквайр... Сквайр хамър ли? Мале... Не, че виж, че ме и... А не... Брат, не успях да лук, бе. Ето е сервисто, бе. Ели бяха. Ако се хайднеш, армора ще ги изглежда. Суит. Направиха на. Ай, двете ти пит, има Валран, бе. А, овър, аз. Но, беше Валран, брат. Килара и 500. Хайде да спуши черен или грани, но не да ги ходиш. Да, брат, бях едно 14. Брат, че отли си не мой игра, така игра, де трябва да се фокусирам да играя. Не е знал, ауди. А тук не съм удар. Аз съм сикнал да е удар и клан фиеста. Я дай пак да свичне. Како не играеш с лигата? Брат, защото на лигата пак се напряг. Е, хора, защото... Лигата е много шит, брат. Какво? Лигата е пълен шит, брат. И какво е защото с... Това? Ръчи ма напряга, а овър вълчен ма напряга. Е, просто не се напряга на лига. Кърдаш, натискаш лалко, задържаш го. Брат, ако губе на лига, ми става гад. Защо? Брат, че от играта не е забавна, ако губиш. Е, така... Овър вълчен е забавна, като губиш. Дос, пъде. Като те стим ролват. Брат, греш, те стим ролват една-две игри. А, те са бърз, брат. Да, ви кажат губите, губите за писмен. Да, да, бързо такова, минаваш на следващото. Или играете ли там много? Не, да, не. Аре, нямаш ли още? Инкричев е пълг. Брат, ти са някакви дълги игри там, е много ангажиращо. За кой играеш в мучплия или гръв ни играете? Абе, брат, повярвай ме, много ми е добре. Интрос, бро. Ганки ще кажеш, че си някакъв много компетът, че бе. А? Ще кажеш, че ти си много компетът. Е, ми казвам, просто е, според мен, ако ще играеш мулчплеер, една такава, по-бридо играеш на кампирич мулър. 
Защото с това са лигата няма значение, защото играта дали е най-съща и на двата бълда му. Ама го отключа, брат. Аз на лига, ако не съм цъкнал ранки, че да знам, че лъпото е интагин, мога да не мога. Ако за повър лъч, то самата игра се ще трябва да се върши. Да бе, знам, че е различно, но много рундо е много нещо, аз не мога така рао, че аз нямам толкова си енергия, бе. Тук, брат, ти спилил съм мозъка, аз даже не мога си кай името, като играл във върши, бе. Един дум в издълна. Брат, лежит не мога си кажа името, че не се еба. Значи, изиграем 3-4 игри, особено в горя с пешака, брат. Даже не знам за кой игра, че. Много е добре, много е добре. 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 Да си блъскаш и ти напред и да бийте много и да се чувстваш добре. Да, да, да. Допаминчето. Особено като си джен крат. Сега съм думфирс. Се танк ли бе? Да. Бях му мойра при малко. Първо беше джънкрат, след това и Мойра, сега е Думфиста, чека е Варайт, плеер. Пешака е най-върсът тази плеера. Брат, пешака е да бигя с боя в демолфа, в бойза. Респект. Брат, пешака в някаква друга селена е ония Дей Куан. Да съм сигурен. Пешака е крали на съдта. В някаква друга селена съм Чарли Шин, брат. Але пешака, ако стане Чарли Шин. Много ги бахна. Много ги бахна, брата, но ти, защото знаем за кога става просто, ако играеш... Това да съм нига да си умрука. Але пешака, да и са да стане Чарли Шин, да си отвори някаква фирма там, да ще чепи гумичета да загъза. Мале, брат, той ще е да бига си. А, искаш по-висока заплатка, не? Плата проме. Плата проме, че... Мале, брат, да сдуй до мейкъра, оби всички, бе. Дуй до мейкъра, оби всички има от отбора, не е лут. Аз съм мун до мейкъра. Брат, то се хаква. Тук е на аутплей в дуй до кър хаква. Бранки ще хаква. Бранки ще сдава за платата за хаква, бе. Много бърпачка. Никола, експонс, потвърди го. Ман, I love cheating in Overwatch. You can't stop me. Бой, бъде да ги чити с тима в Overwatch. Е, 100%? Да, но не. И да не знам, че съм, и да не знам, че съм, и да не знам, че съм, и да не знам по-скоро. И съм виждал от хакер във във. Много добре, ще че. Защото Blizzard имат много добро такова. Да, да. Това Валорант ми се е случвало, бе. Че аз си в Лига не съм. Да. Аз в Лига съм ждал с какъв търна. Брат, то сложи стена на място, тук Рид го убива в тос. То в Лига имаше един ксерат диц, като е смешно, е смешно. Ай, брат, просто бил слаб. Ни бе човек да изстат, аз не подръща бе грамо. Абе брат, той един нямаше мистер скилшът, той му казваме ще нула мистер скилшът. Аз го тестах, аз седах пред него, плащах да се тръжи простото и то мъгне той просто директно за варча и балдари се един. Той нямаше мистер скилшът, брат. Мисъл, той ще го презнава от него. И като... Беше нула мистер скилшът. А, той е лъгъл. Значи той е брат, ти не може да правиш на хера. Абе брат, щом Калинския може начин. Той е бабна. Калинския му, ти Калинския е най-лоши аксерът. Кой е Калинския? Най-лоши аксерът. Чо с брадата е? А, той е Калинския е Биг Боя. Калинския е Биг Дог Зера, две кай. Той е учил жив кукът малък да играе Зера. Е, ти нямаш нужда да го споделяш. Ма не е една истина. А пълния клип, де ето Бродзила убива Атани? Той са с Дейва, но той ксерът беше различен герой, бе. Е, да, той е от Калински. 
Седат преди да, да ти искаш дабъл и се увеличават рейнджа на магиите и дърното ти беше сегашното дабъл. Много голям. Кацал ли беше лошгър? Аз много е беше яд, че не съм играл тогава. Чуд ги видях там. Таня Гали обича на я. Брата, който цъкаш стария си он слич бей ни дед фар грас пита, който дед фар грас пита на ото атака и те са бъл. Стария трокс, bring back стария трокс. Ох, не бе, ян. Аз също съм фен на стария трокс. Аз стария трокс беше толкова с по-добър. Стария трокс беше да пара. Долкс по-добър. Брат си грач, че е забавен. Бъвам, кума забавен. Ооо, статична 10 секунди анимация на Q Статична 5 секунди анимация на второто Q Анимация, да се си е тай дон, лайк Че, не е готино, брат Моли пет Ауто атакваше по-явно си Да Ясно, то спък Ще пак го за лайф стилвам от майка Ами гледал ли си рацирала монтаж брат, той буквално само ауто атаква Майка ти има прави мина Не е на Twitch Говорим за стария Атрокс брат Говорим за стария Атрокс брат Говорим за ауто атаки бе брат Но е фън да ги кайтваш с ауто атаките Ма че стария ги кайтваш и ги кенсалваш Да е, тук кенсалването е кайтване Ама, да, Трокс мега кринч, брат. Там... Те е кюта, брат. Пах ти тъпата магия, брат. Но е ли? Брат, от героиките балансирали най-чистни героики, брат. Ама сега ни е балансирали на земен Брокът. Кой бе? Кому е Брокът на брат? Ще пекне на Фьора и ще му удара дабъл и на кюта. Да, изискрия героиките. Над всяко е... Как е идея? Ко? Брат, сирно е врата, че съм губил от тази Трокс, брат. Да, да, хубаво. Молчу е смешен. Значи пешака директно до кара, както се е пещата. Да, кара. Виж ме уинрията, твич, че си слаб с най-си. Не, не, не моя уинрията. Твоя да видя, бе, какво стана. Срам ли тая, какво стана? Ай, 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 не смешни цел. Ай, след ли върка на айтъм, тя пошли съм върка? Да, върка на айтъм и ти. Това е чекър с лаби статуи. Той герой е... Ти учиваш... Правиш ти, което правиш... Те той се шава как... Брат, стария атрок, старото кю. Стария бе. Ева. Бота ръка дабъл и отън. Оригиналния Виего. Брат. Стария Нав. Стария Нав. Наистина, наистина, наистина. Буквам Стария Нав, брат. Хора, брат ми, Садо Мазо тук е. Садо Мазо! Брат, не мога ме и Уинстън да ми скочат като играеш и нямам даш. Имаш даша. Къде имаш даша, да ще втърси? Е, бя го ползвал. Да, да си можеш да че си нямам ползвал, окей? Хм, си имал предвид от глагола, не си нямаш като време. Нееее, това си е голяма курва. Това е баба си точно. Брат, не към бачи да знае със видеомейкъра, че колко е кринч. Стой, чак баба ти чува ли тъй да всъщ? А, да бе, сто първо, как не е. Това е брат, си мутите си. Това е гадна. Моите ни мое. Става, че тъпва ма мина. Моите никога ни мое. Аз съм се постарал да ни мое. Аре бе, видеомейкъра, къде си бе, къде си бе, смешницо, къде си бе. Я де хуя ме, къде да ме? Къде че на бара каската, брат, няма тук да тъм я мъгля. Няма тъм да мъгля, но ясно е. Мърси плей оф да гейм, ле? А, ето е любви друг мейка. Да, просто е руса. Ти 
Ти що, думку забавено? Бати, но някой му държи ще ръката ни. Гей, гей, гей. Кринджер, брат. Полно с кринджер на всяка. Само кринджер. Дай, афа къс, напиша нон продъкшна. А, брат, ще играеш играта от десятка, от десятка. Маля, човек, всеки батъл пас на яките параски. Какво? Какво? Брат, всеки батъл пас има някакъв як параски на аскодо на пара. Ево, на батъл пасарица. Паре му... Брат, когато съм не играл, играл съм и сега ще кажа май 37 минути. И сега ще кажа колко съм играл пара, и чакай. Пара 43 минути. Това е нещо, което е много бързо от Шаркейт, мога да ги изглежда едно в едно, дето ставаш като ти. Много че е много фарма. Това е мишел. Много че е ти бе да фармя, много че. Да фармя филията там, дека. Или това фурната. Майко. Брат, билета за съда бит. Пъка бич нига хи не разбира. Брат, къде е то с фара скинът ми на лята кое е? Ето биш ми го би ягна. Бранки, но ето долу до фара скинът е. Зако не съм нейви сил да мога да се приспивам за 30 секунди. Долу до фара сайлас. Какво да се? Нейви сил. Аз мислех, че се каза NPC, искам от това NPC-та за скът за 3 секунди, ето нова тактика. Бра, аз ако ако... Аз чак да стана NPC, ако може да... NPC-то. NPC-то. Чак, аз ми някаква черна. Нема черна, що аз да бъдем черни гейм. Ммм, тото аз ви ще изявява. Мога да взема, тя фарата е черна. Ой, то се взе чер... Ана! Египетът е чир. Египетът е чир. Да, че не разглежда малко на чоки. Добре, една ешко ще взема сомбър. Тук е дъщерята на Ана, брат. Пак е черна. Това е байри, брат. Лоджик е нигър. Има лъка нигър. Андрю Тейт. Андрю Тейт му е ка нигър. Е, баща му е нигър. Ама на лучки дигър. Е да, той е бай рейшал, нали той ти му е всичко да ги сбиваш. Ама дигър, това е 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 това така ли е пешак? Не го разбира ли? Доста бих. Аз Моера най-кринч героя. Много. Много ти си е две кринч героя. Не са, не са много. Аз правя много дум в изравата. Ти си много яга, ти си много почин. Ти може да смече, че са да пъхна дум в изт? Ако пиш предишна дума. Защо Думфис беше толкова като гърб? Отна ли са Думфис, да, гърб? Да, ти казах. Реално сега е окей. Не е от нея от тези сопа там, кое те е малки. Ой, склана, ей. Ей, гърба. Аре, смешни кос. Какво става? О, патчинка. Порката кръса. Из Борис Джонсон хил. Като и аз се трасам. Да. Ще пускам да гледам Азлен Голд. 
И какво? Ще гледаш как гледа пет... Ще гледа как гледаш... Ще го гледаш как гледа 5 минути на клипче, ама той го гледа всъщност 40 минути и 5 минути на клипче. Да. Ти гледа като го преди през аутори. Не, не, той просто някой ще каже някаква дума... И той веднага там ще каже опиния на си. Върху той деца казали. Дарк дарк а, кацал не е лошо, ама да гледаш 5 на 10 клип, половин час е overkill, бе брат. Къде е отентизирал към Нямам такова. Дали си туиш ходав на YouTube клип, че как го не бряхва на Да. И трябва да има... Еленко, не иска гледах някакво как YouTube ще скамват някакви работи с шорт. Там, че ни монетайзват с срещи TikTok. Те, те почна малко с шорта за ти. Ти трябва да комбайнваш клипове с шорта, да ги адвертайзваш с шорта. Брат, скамбайнваш. Ти какво пиеш, защото шортовете писат по-лесно в Огурска. Много по-лесно. Ти скамбайнваш, брат. Какво си Брат, брат, ти са скамбайнваш. 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 Брат, ти са Брат, скаш да платя 80 долара да хакнат, бе. Аз ще платя други 80 долара да каунтър хакнат. Айде да правя. Айде да... Да кому го фичуринг дискорд? Плащам ли си са плати са хаква на земна? Брат, според мен е боепръпъсите на пешака ще стигнат за повече време от колко на Галенко. Защо мислиш така, Борис? Защото е бачкал повече време от тебе. Откъде знаеш, аз нямам... Допълнителни пари от някъде. Защото знам. Брат, как трябва да карам тази тупка с вътто, бе, брат? Няма как да стане. Тупка с вътто. Някак ме е чрез. Аре, къде има... Аз предиктвам, че Галинко ще издържи около 3 седмици и половина преди да бъде повален. Ами като топа и някак си трябва да бъде... От хакерите. Това е странно, е странно. Аз треса как ще повляй върху пешака. Да, 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 Аре, къде има копър? Няма. Найс. Маре, едно по-вълно е гънал от инстаграм, брат, защото си нечна. Миш, малко. Това е избавно. Брат, гъна е фичър рапа. Никога не съм го фалвал и аз. Знаеш ли, че тази група е било престъпно организирана? Да, реално. Ако не е организирана... Като ли оби, би смисъл, кейф ма като е на фичър, ама да се го пусна с едно соло, а обма му не кажа. Много е добре, брат, че отрицат гъна е по-добър соло, колко на фичър. Не би са, реално гъна има много добри работи, има повечето работи са ми. Ние ако ще слушам такова, ще слушам Янг Тъка. Ще слушам Янг Тъка, ако ще слушам Янг Тъка. Той е гъна, няма слава песен. Ти е, Янг Тъка гъна е доста любишно. Брат, си едно фьючер и узи, брат. Знам. Аз ти го ждам. Гъна е бейби плуто на Янг Тъка. Бе, да, ама реално просто не е такова. Със сигурност ми е като филчер. А пак 3 пирият много са изложени. 21, can you do some for me? Той дето и си... Той 3 пирият дето и скара венджерите на рап гейма в нови албум. Беше фичър, дете. Това ти 
Ай ти ми чупят всичко е брат. Чупим главата и искаш да. When you want, can you talk to the ops next for me? No. When you want, can you do something? Uh, do you think, when you want, do you think? Ja, ja, ja. Ja, 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 Why didn't I have a nigger? I Бях много в ролплея. Но сега бях на цял кома, цапнах да видя си. О, колко си прост. Ема ли е смисъл? Аз ти е много говоря. Мали е бърната. Ей, шеф, брат. Чай, че сега станаха много трудно с тича. Ik ga er aan gaan. Ik ga er aan gaan. Ik ga er aan black, Ik ga er aan Let's go. Hell yeah. Mala is such a prick. Double hell yeah. Prick. Prick. Back with the vengeance. Ik heb het niet gedaan. 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 I have arrived. Da, Borker, wat is het dan in Scarecrow? Dat zijn de mensen die het niet hebben. Dat zijn de mensen die het niet hebben. 
Vale. Prepudam. Prepudam. Play of the game. Я ще с катая. Ти са право, няма да знаят къде ми е дошло. Е, браз, ми страха от къде ми е. Франки, какво е? Кардиака рист на български. Кардичен арист, буквално голят съм. Яко ли? Прекрасно е. Нали са неща на маржи? Много брат, га цяло малко неща мажат повече. Още едно гадно при обожна за маржи. Да, га, мозъкът ти няма да отпусне мега много допаминчата да успокои за последните няколко сега. Далё? Как бы тут ты не рвана? Курт Кобейн, не знаю. Просто в симозах Курт Кобейн. Пинк Войт. No hot. No, yeah, come on. That's the first gold line. Pink point. Oh, yeah. 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 Той е Pink Voice и кой? Pink Voice Той е нас предисъдачи Направо ги пръснах Банка зажен, тото е нещо нормално Е, не е, чак той Шакът е да бига Ара, това са Колкото е майка си Е, не е странно с тази Това майка си не, никакъв шанс. Това майкът не е как да не е. Това е един гадно. Това е три. Това е две години разка. Това е много три. Аз казах 0, аз казах 0,6, не за четворките. Ще ми е преда са. Това е добре да са дървиш на деца, аз не имам пресъпи. От Alien vs Predator, кой ти е любим? Alien? Оператор, може си отдалече от вас. Не, не, брат, не, не, не. Гранки, виж, ако не беше вярно, нямаше да се обясня. Тото, ако не е вярно, наистина, ти ще си спокоен и ще знаеш, че не е вярно. Брат, нали има хорец с родиния младе? Гранки, ще си като Пинокио, брат. Ти е пешака, що толкова си чуе нещата. Давай, отдъхвай хората. Някой ден искам да ги чувам кът пешака, кът пешака. Ама до тогава, брат. Е, баш ти го, брат. Брат, до тогава ще съм глух. Някой ден ще ги чуе, обаче. Много е голям. Защо ми се е направили тик мами, ага? Не знам. Зух спори болезна. Ми има едни скинове и едни много хват. Нещо? 
Сестрачи, спандекс, дива, костюми. Майко. Чай, пежа, как си, как си мислиш, че са кака се странно? И Велина. Не, не беше, че някаква друга глупост беше. Силвена. Не, друга глупост беше. Не знам си какво така ме беше. Между другото, аз не знам как си кака се страчи. Елена. А, да, бе. Как са кака? Как са кака? Елена. Милина и че аз съм близо наче Елена бе Целотиста Много е добър пешак Милина повече маки Не познавам Милина май Винаги съм искал Мале Ама е Three more DLC packs that add a tavern that lets me walk through time, unveiling this world's violent past. This spinny winny machine that lets me suck souls out of corpses, and a communist donkey revolution. Oh, and I of course defile a whole bunch of corpses. It's a real hoot, trust me. I played 300 days of Graveyard Keeper. On day 201, I invited Stranger Sins, Game of Thrones, and Better Save Soul to the party. Give me all the DLCs. The story was about to get way more intense, and the list of fun things to do just got longer. I wandered into the morgue, and out of nowhere, Jerry was outraged about how awful the wine I gave him like 150 days ago was. He said he wanted some cognac. I had no idea how to get cognac, so he said I should look for a buried old keg that he and the former graveyard keeper used to drink from. For now though, it was about time I figured out what the heck corpse embalming was all about. And step one was to gather some sand and smelt it into glass. Donkey rocked up and he informed me it was time for the communist revolution. The executive community of the party of Donkey's proletariat. He said I was to be given one more chance to prove myself in the eyes of enlightened labor. And if I refuse, I'll burn down a home, graveyard, garden, and church. That sounds about right. My first task was to create a cookbook for the rat chief, as the donkeys need the help of Ratatouille in their revolution, apparently. And also, I was to provide five red apples to help boost donkey morale. I crafted this contraband crate, and this is where I'll leave all the requested goodies for donkey to pick up. All right, there's the... <laughs> It's got a picture of a curvy carrot and an apple. Hammer and sickle, step aside. I immediately grabbed apples from this tree and chucked them in the crate. I then headed back into the morgue. It's, it's wriggly. <laughs> uh, even if you've died quite recently, I'm pretty sure you don't wriggle. I helped the wriggler free and it was Yurik, some bloke from the town. He told me he had a keeper's book and it said there was a hidden area in the morgue. He demanded I give him the key, except I had no idea what he was talking about. He found an excerpt that read, glued the key with chewing gum to the inner side of the skull. <laughs> Is it in Jerry's skull? I burned the other non-wriggly body, and while doing so, Donkey returned to collect his apples. Those are fresh from the orchard, mate. Hope you and the Donkey comrades enjoy. I crafted 10 speed potions, ate some sauerkraut, and then drank them all at once. Because a commenter mentioned the buff duration stacks. And so now I'll be zippy zippy for two and a half hours. Very nice. I queued up a bunch of stuff to zombie craft in the yard, and then rather than straight up telling Jerry he had a chewing gum key in his head, I decided to offer to clean him with beer. He's a raging alcoholic, so he was a big fan of that idea. Are you ready to shine as bright as diamond? Shine bright like a diamond. Like the video and subscribe if you agree that a scrubbing mixture of beer and sand would definitely make your skull shine bright like a diamond. All right, I'm cleaning. <laughs> it tickles. It tickles, Jerry, does it? All right, I found the old rusty key. I quickly made the Ratatouille cookbook, chucked it into the communist crate, and then gave the key to Yurik. Who is this guy, by the way? It's a bit... Holy moly, there's a whole massive area in here. This looks kind of creepy. Yurik then finally told me what his deal was. He had committed a crime and he was on the run. To escape, he'd pretended to be a corpse and had been sent off to the graveyard. Before chatting to the criminal weirdo any further, I made a couple more fridge pallets so that I can store more bodies and not feel so much pressure to deal with each corpse as soon as it arrives. I chatted to Yurik and he explained he'd been cheated out of his money by the bishop. To be honest, that sounds like classic bishop behavior. And the crime that had put him on the run was stealing his money back from the bishop. He also explained that this strange room held devices to heal souls of the dead, and perhaps even living souls. And the reason he'd fled here was that he wanted his soul healed. We also had a look at this strange box. Whoa! 
There's a ghost. <laughs> what the hell are you? This fella is Smiler, and he'd been stuck in that box for decades. I unlocked some new building options, and also an entirely new tech tree for spiritualism. Very juicy. We do love a good tech tree. Smiler said he wouldn't help me out explaining what the heck was going on until I brought him a berry pie, so I put some on to cook. Once ready, I fed the apparition his pie, and he told me he was half man, half ghost. And a previous graveyard keeper had been trying to create devices that would heal souls from sin, and also send those souls to the land of the dead. Well, I'm already in the business of messing with stinky corpses, why not mess with some stinky souls too? I cleaned up a bit and gave Yurik some oil with which to lubricate the rusty hinges of this trapdoor. The plan was to hide Yurik down here, but it was a bit of a mess, so I was tasked with cleaning it up. I then discovered a note in the communist crate. The rat's chief can't read, but he enjoyed the pictures in your cookbook. Okay. So he ripped them out and ate them. Well, that sounds productive. There weren't enough apples, so the donkeys fought each other over them, and there were a lot of casualties but they appreciated the effort. Sounds like the revolution is firing on all cylinders. My next task was to write and send them aphorisms about the evils of money and also send them five faith. I wrote the aphorisms. I can only imagine I wrote something like money bad, donkey supreme. And I placed what I'd written plus the five faith in the crate. After an absolute whirlwind of a few days, I did some farming to calm down a bit. I queued up a bunch of crates for my graveyard veggies business to sell and also set the queue on all the zombie farms to create infinite crops. Another tip from the comments section. This will save me clicking the right arrow 4,000 times. I fridged another body and as day 204 dawned, I went for a dig on behalf of Jerry. I didn't find his cognac, but I did find this archaeological machine. Jerry said the graveyard keeper before the cognac graveyard keeper had built this, so I guess there were multiple graveyard keepers before me. But then Kresvold wandered over and told me off for digging on public land, so our conversation was cut short. I then hit up the astrologer to continue with the main quest line. The university was extremely impressed by the book I'd written, so they had restored the astrologer's credentials and greenlit the archaeological expedition up by the the mountain fort. The last thing needed was an aristocrat's signature, and fortunately I happened to be of that noble class. I queued up a bunch of conical flasks, step two of my quest toward embalming, and then returned with my aristocrat papers and off we went. It magically became nighttime, which was handy as it meant the soldiers were sleeping and we were able to rescue Wagner. He was embarrassed Miss Charm was seeing his hairy, hairy body and the tail that had grown due to the flyer Garrick infusion, but Miss Charm said she only cared about his inner beauty. The plan was to put Wagner in a crate and sneak him out, pretending he was an archaeological find but we were caught. The Lord Commander was furious, and he declared he would have us killed. Miss Charm and the astrologer said their apologies, reconciling their father-daughter relationship while they still could. And then Miss Charm went in for a little smoochy smooch with the hairy-lipped Wagner. This magically turned him back into his normal self, just like a princess and a frog. The Lord Commander was aghast he'd almost killed his own son, and Wagner said that if we were released, he'd commit himself to becoming a knight like his father had always wanted. And so overall, that was a successful expedition. In thanks, I received the necklace from Miss Charm, and the golden angle from the astrologer. I suddenly had everything I needed to activate the portal on Witch Hill. If I want to, I can finish the game right now. But it feels like it wouldn't be right. It feels it feels like it wouldn't be right. I think I need to do the DLC first. And so it was back to business. We'll hit up the portal later. I harvested and burned another corpse and then found Donkey had left another note. My aphorisms were appreciated. Good. We decided to adopt them as the constitution of the coming worldwide donkey socialistic republic. Okay. After consuming the faith, everyday donkeys became greatly inspired, even believing that all donkeys are equal. We have had to remind them with our hooves that some donkeys are more equal than others. My next task was to provide them with battle gear, some battle horseshoes and iron unicorn horns, as well as a magical pumpkin carriage with which to embarrass their master. That makes no sense at all to me, but it sounds like a recipe for some Cinderella shenanigans, so I was all for it. Sunday rolled around, so I lit all the candles and gave a combo prayer church service, earning a juicy 88 faith. I had a quick snooze, and when I awoke, some weirdo was in my house. He wasn't a thief, but he had escaped from prison three days ago, so I guess that was a relief. He was Marquis Teodoro Jr. And he and his rich friends had been sentenced to the fire by the Inquisition. But he insisted to me they were falsely accused, which I 100% believe. The Inquisition will burn anyone these days. They'd set up a refugee camp in the forest to the north, but since they were all aristocrats, none of them had any useful life skills, so they needed my help. He also introduced me to Master Alaric, the former Inquisitor who had helped them escape. This old fella asked what the ancient god had told me. I had no idea what he was talking about, which I yelled back at him in all caps because he was extremely deaf. My ignorance annoyed him, so he told me to leave him be. The Marquis told me there were many others back in town that could use rest. What is that name? Petrona Sorsfa, Nobre.
a huge, but the camp needed to grow first. So he tasked me with building a well and an additional tent. These cost a resource called camp happiness, which I could grow by providing food and water. I think it would be fitting to feed these guys some human meat burgers right? It would be on brand. It would really be on brand. So I'm slicing up some human meat right now. I grabbed a bunch of berries, apples, and water, cooked up the cannibal burgers, and grabbed whatever other random food I had lying around. And this all seemed to contribute to the happiness growth of the camp. So it was just a matter of time until I had the happiness I needed. I headed into town and bought some dairy goods and eggs so that I could cook even more food, fridged yet another corpse, and asked Kresvold to craft the battle horseshoes and iron unicorn horns for me. He asked me if Heradric was playing a prank on him, as Heradric often does that to help cure his crippling depression. And I said, don't be silly, I have a perfectly normal reason for wanting these. Therefore, the communist donkey revolution, don't you know? He charged me 50 silver and told me to come get them later. I made even more food for the refugees and then made a discovery. <laughs> look, what? look at this. <laughs> I think I made a few too many crates. I can only sell 10 per week, so I'd better calm down. I paid a visit to the zombie vineyards and grabbed a bunch of grapes, which I chucked in the cellar for continued zombie wine making shenanigans. I grabbed some materials, including silk, and returned to the refugee camp and made a new tent. This used up two happiness, but increased the happiness cap up to four. I then continued work on my embalming quest. I studied the black jelly I got from killing those weird monsters in the dungeon, as well as silver nuggets, and then hand mixed the black jelly into death solution and milled the silver nuggets into silver powder. A bunch of crates had been sold, so I placed the overflow crates neatly on pallets to be transported by Mr. Muscle's zombie and then dealt with another body. I actually buried this one as all my fridges were full and the crappy corpse I dug up to make space in the graveyard held an interesting discovery. Wait, what the heck? There's a sin shard in this body. My guess was this had something to do with the soul contraptions in the new room next door. I then continued gathering alchemy reagents. I studied a bee and white flower, hand mixed some bees into order solution and continued distilling life extract from maggots. I used silver powder, order solution and life extract to make silver elixir and then had alchemy zombie get to work mixing a bunch more. I studied a lentil and a pumpkin and put the lentils on to distill into health extract. By the way, I was using extensive googling to guide me through all these alchemy shenanigans. I headed to the refugee camp and built a well and the next quest the Marquis had for me was to build an additional tent and set up fencing for a farm area. I did a bunch of chores, performed a banger sermon and then made three more fridge pallets. I also made a few more mortuary racks for more storage. I paid the blacksmith a visit and collected the donkey armaments which I placed in donkey's crate. I kept zombie craft chugging along in the yard and made three more alchemy racks down here for yet more storage. I like storage. I even did a little organizing, designating one rack for alchemy powders and another for extracts and solutions. I built the refugee camp its farming area and also invited a new refugee to the party. She wasn't particularly talkative. I finally upgraded my fourth furnace to level three and then asked Clotho to enchant a pumpkin. She went on a rant about how an enchanted pumpkin won't impress the ladies and said ridiculous things like love and care will, which we both had a good laugh about. And then I paid her 50 silver to to shut up and make me the flame and magic pumpkin and I placed it in donkey's crate. I bought some silk and beeswax and then finally remembered to talk to Jerry about the machine we dug up about 10 days ago. Since we can't dig it up without owning land, Jerry suggested we buy the land and build a tavern on top of it as a cover. I asked him why he was so keen to use the machine and he said he hopes it will help him remember his past. Up at the camp I welcomed another friend. Push me. Push me, new refugee. And then I received another revolutionary message from Donkey. Okay, the donkeys have traded in the battle gear of the donkey for pink ribbons and in their manes. That seems counterproductive. They're not just acting like morons, they're also looking like morons. When the carriage turned to a pumpkin, the royal vet lost his shoe. That shoe was found by a young and wealthy widow, Cinderella. My next task was to provide some black and white paint so the donkeys could disguise themselves as zebras. Some jelly of incredible power for the rats, which will make them martial arts gurus and fond of turtles, apparently, as well as a banner. I then hit up Haradric and asked to buy some land. That seems steep, 9,682 gold. He suggested I buy the land in the name of a poor and old villager, as they get discounts. Can I buy some land in your name, Dick? He's just talking about cake. Dear cake, dear cake, let me take, let you bake. I took that wonderful chant as approval and returned to Heradric. And the discounted price was a bargain at 30 silver. It's such a relief I was able to exploit the elderly to my advantage. Now that I had the land, I needed contractors to build. So I paid Corey two gold to drop all his current projects and get to work. I had a snooze and when I awoke, Kreswold the blacksmith was lurking outside my house. He told me vampires had been spotted in the village and as an expert in the dead, my services were required. Three villagers had been bothered by a vampire, apparently and the town was in uproar trying to figure out what to do. The beekeeper had the most elite suggestion, as he believed the vampire was likely his nemesis, Hornet Man, and he vowed to release his carnivorous bees. Frankly, that was the best plan I'd ever heard, but Heradric asked me to look into the situation, just in case the murderous bees didn't work out. So, suddenly, I was a vampire hunter. I hope I don't end up like the last vampire hunter. 
I picked up my graveyard veggies profit and apparently it had been two weeks as I earned over three gold. And then I visited my beautiful new tavern. Jerry said my first task was to create a barman doll to man the bar. From the look of it, I could also build some furniture to improve tavern quality and later on host some events once I earned these star thingos. There was also a big kitchen downstairs and an area where I could create more shelves, presumably to stock a bunch of beverages. I headed home, grabbed a bunch of building materials and then returned and built the artifact display. No idea what that's for, but it is quite fancy. And I also built two tables. This raised the tavern quality up to 15. I also built some shelves downstairs. Here we go, barman doll. <laughs> That's like a ventriloquist doll. I plonked the doll down at the bar. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yorick. <laughs> Yorick the ghost has animated this ventriloquist doll to work around the clock. Yorick explained to me that I simply needed to place alcohol on the pallets downstairs and he'd do the rest. And I could collect my profit from the box. He also said that tavern quality increases the amount of customers we get, which makes sense. I built one more set of shelves and then it was time to break down this wall and create access to the entire reason for this whole charade of a tavern, the archeological machine. There's a skeleton, yeah. It's the inventor keeper. His corpse is perfectly preserved though, so that's quite impressive. Jerry explained that artifacts could be placed in the machine, allowing us to witness scenes from the far past. Conveniently, the old graveyard keeper had compiled a list of artifacts. And first on the list was a statuette of the old god owned by Havradric. So Jerry told me to track that down so that we could begin unraveling the history of this strange world. I headed home to deal with this smelly old graveyard keeper's body, but I was ambushed by the one-eyed, one-legged shepherd. And it turns out he's a self-styled vampire hunter. And since he knows I'm the kind of bloke that hangs around corpses all day, I was his number one suspect for all the vampire shenanigans haunting the town recently. I have a feeling the dead body I happened to be carrying wasn't helping my chances, but I attempted to convince him he had the wrong man. He insisted I must eat raw garlic to prove my innocence. The bloke was unhinged, so I obliged, much to the dismay of my taste buds, but then he mused that perhaps I was one of those mutant vampires who could tolerate garlic, and concluded the only way to definitively solve the matter was to push a wooden stake through my heart and see if I die or not. I figured that wasn't in my best interest, so I promised to find him the real vampire if he'd leave me alone. He finally relented. I then dealt with old mate dead graveyard keeper's body. Got two brains? Why has his body got two brains? He was an inventor, so he was very smart, therefore two brains. Nice. I dealt with this rather rotten corpse, studied a gold nugget, and then finally fixed up Yurik's hidey hole. Once finished, he helped me move this big old stained glass window into the church. It's quite beautiful. On day 216, I stocked up the tavern with a bunch of beer and wine, and then headed to the refugee camp. I chatted to the cook, and she was depressed as she missed her kitchen, so I promised to set one up for her in the camp. For now though, I just made one more tent. I fridged one body, collected a bunch of billets with which I built some pyres, and burnt a corpse. I then concocted some zombie juice and resurrected zombie number 34. I popped this fellow into the porter station that had materialized when I opened my tavern. And his job will be to transport alcoholic beverages to the tavern storage area. You do a noble work, my friend. For now, I instructed him not to take the gold star wine as I use these for energy. But as you'll see later, this was actually a mistake. I crafted some tier three candles, placed black and white paint in the communist crate, and then gave my weekly sermon. I made some flour, grabbed some green slime, and cooked these jellies of incredible power. And I also crafted this inspiring banner. My TMNT rat turtles. Rat turtles, tur rat, green rats, and then <laughs> revolutionary donkey banner. After that extremely articulate sentence, I placed the items in donkey's crate. I checked in on the talking skull. That's the name of my new tavern, by the way. And I found that I'd earned my first 10 silver. I then filled my bags with materials and finally got to work fixing up this strange room down here. I built the workbench, a soul container base, and a couple of chests. I also repaired the soul extractor. This thing spins corpses around crazy fast and the centrifugal force sucks the soul right out. Sounds like a banger of a theme park, right? Ride. I tried to extract the soul of one of my fridge bodies, but it wouldn't let me, so I guess souls fade away after a while. Next, I completed the soul container, and Smiler helpfully explained that I can store souls in this thing, and it'll slow down soul decay. I repaired this creepy soul healer machine, and Smiler was back with more explanations. He said all humans are born pure, but they don't stay that way. They're corrupted by their bodies, with various body parts causing different sins. And this machine uses body parts to purify <coughs> souls somehow. You know what? Sounds like an even bigger banger of a theme park ride. I needed polishing paste to repair this last machine, the soul portal. So I headed out to make some and I found Donkey awaited me. He informed me the revolution was a success. The master had been captured, the horses had been exiled, and the best and brightest donkeys and rats were installing a new socialist government. Sounds like utopia to me. I collected clay, put a bunch of clay bowls on for skinny zombie to craft. I made the polishing paste and finally repaired the soul portal. And Yurik explained this thing sends souls off to the land of the dead to help mitigate any violations of the ancient contract. And you already know it, that sounds like an even bigger, bigger banger of a theme park ride. And then a body arrived. Oh, we're extracting a soul. Oh, 
harmed soul. I took the body out and chucked it in the fridge and then placed the soul in the soul healer. I stole some flesh from this corpse and placed it in the workbench. And this is where you can add white skulls or red skulls to body parts up to a total of three of each skull. This is an exciting prospect for raising corpse quality as you'll see later. It costs sin shards though, so I couldn't modify this flesh just yet. I then placed the flesh in the soul healer. Each soul requires body parts with different stats to be healed. This soul, for example, needed two red skull flesh to have that particular sin healed. I only had a typical white skull piece of flesh, so I didn't get much healing done this time. One sin shard and a healed soul popped out. What the? What the heck? I received seven souls gratitude for sending this healed soul on its way. I need 10 to unlock the next tech in the spiritualism tree. And even though at this point I was definitely quite confused about what I'd just done, it felt like good progress. I did a bit of chopping to stay on top of flitch production because making 10 crates per week for graveyard veggies uses heaps of flitch and then checked on my talking skull profits again, another 12 silver. And I was about two thirds of the way to my first reputation star. I also grabbed my graveyard veggies profit. I am quite the businessman. Another body arrived, so I excitedly extracted its soul and this one required three red skull and two white skull flesh. And my flesh at least had one white skull, so my healing efforts were more effective this time. And I received eight souls gratitude from the portal. This meant I had enough to unlock healer enthusiast. Remote craft control and healing from pride. I also unlocked useful equipment, updated equipment, and prayer for souls. I added the healing from pride extension to the soul healer, built a soul receiver. I had no idea what this was at this stage, but I worked out later this was part of the remote crafting system. And I also upgraded the soul extractor. I realized I'd left a body in the extractor, so I grabbed it and harvested all its organs and placed them in this chest, and then had a proper look at the workbench. As an experiment, I used two sin shards to add a white skull onto this blood. And as you can see, it went from minus one white skull to zero white skulls. I placed a wall crematorium, which is a more convenient way to burn bodies, great news, and I then healed another soul. Thanks to my upgrades, I could use both flesh and skin to heal this one, which meant I earned two sin shards instead of one. And I earned 13 souls gratitude, which allowed me to unlock experienced healer. I added the healing from wrath and gluttony extensions, so I can now heal using fat and blood too. I unlocked updated machines rank two, crafted a bunch of materials, including these fancy carved wood thingos, which I had never used before, and then put in another wall crematorium before getting an update from Comrade Donkey informing me the revolution had failed after all. The rats seized power in opposed office and declared a military dictatorship. Now the donkey situation is even worse than it was before the revolution. Oh, donkey. Poor, poor donkey. After that profound moral lesson on the pride and pitfalls of attempting to create utopia via political revolution, I figured it was time to continue on my quest to inject strange substances into dead bodies. I had an alchemy decomposer zombie turn pumpkins into health powder. I milled down a gold nugget into gold powder. And then I realized it was Sunday, so I got distracted. Since sin shards are used to literally increase the quality of body parts and therefore the quality of corpses and zombies, I figured I needed as many as I could get. And so I wrote a gold star chapter and used it to write a gold star prayer for souls thorough cleansing. This doubles the amount of sin shards you receive for healing souls, and I wanted to test it out and see how long this effect would last for. Turns out one hour and 47 minutes. That's like 13 in-game days. Very nice. I built the cook's table at the refugee camp and then collected flowers literally all night because I needed more moths. I even continued into the day and got some butterflies too. I studied a butterfly and then because I was a bit low on red points, I ate some cake and studied all my steel tools too. This earned me 100 per tool for a total of 500 red points. I milled some butterflies into chaos powder and then dealt with another body. I modified some flesh, adding one white skull and kept it in the chest here to use for future soul healings and then checked on the refugee camp. The Marquis was grateful for my help so far and gave me some rewards. Most notably, a mysterious artifact called the Witch's Eye. I built two garden beds and then chatted to this weird bloke who offered to loan me one gold at 1% interest per day. I wasn't interested in crippling debt, but I was delighted to see he sold gold materials, which is very useful as gold is a pain to get otherwise. I bought some gold nuggets and powder. I dealt with another corpse and this one's soul earned me eight sin shards when I healed it, which was one per body part used in the healing times two thanks to the prayer buff. I also earned 23 souls gratitude and unlocked professional healer. I added the sloth, lust and envy extensions to the soul healer and now all seven key body parts can get involved in the healing process. I placed two more garden beds at the refugee camp and planted some crops. So now they should be a little more self-sufficient up here. I upgraded the soul extracted to its highest rank three and used it to extract this fresh corpse's 
soul. I modified that blood some more, making it plus two white skulls, and then healed this soul using seven body parts. And as you can see, I still didn't fully heal this soul, but I earned 14 sin shards nonetheless. All my embalming prep for the constant reagent gathering and endless googling then finally came to fruition. I made glue, alkali, and golden elixir, and used these, plus the silver elixir I had made a while back, to finally make silver injection, lye injection, glue injection, and gold injection. Another body arrived, and in the process of healing its soul, I modified a few body parts, basically trying to match the skulls to what the soul required so that it would be healed as much as possible. I was running low on space in the morgue, so I burned a couple of bodies, and then took some flyers and faith to the talking skull and used one reputation star to host a graveyard fest, which sounds like a raging party. These two blokes loved it. According to this, I didn't serve the right alcohol for this type of party though, as that face doesn't seem too impressed, and I only made 19 silver. The barman then asked me to place a greeter out the front, as he reckoned that'd make Haradric jealous. Sunday had rolled around, but I had no beeswax for candles, so my combo prayer only earned me 50 faith this week. I built a soul container 3, which can hold 4 souls and adds plus 20 to the total soul's gratitude I can store. And then I chatted to Smiler about how to heal a live human soul. He said I needed special sin shards from extra talented sinners, one for each of the 7 deadly sins. To begin, I needed to track down someone especially prideful. I had someone in mind. I then finally embalmed my first corpse. First up, it was a silver injection. This removes one red skull and adds one white skull. Next, I did a gold injection, which removes two red red skulls and adds two white skulls, and then the glue injection which adds plus one white skull. I visited Haradric and finally asked him about the statuette of the ancient god, and he said he'd be happy to get rid of it and that I should ask his wife. She took me aside and told me Haradric had come back from town last week smelling of booze and perfume, and that she wanted me to find evidence of his infidelity. Goodness me, trouble in paradise. I asked Kresvold about the boy's trip to town, and he had a giant whinge about how hard life is. So I offered commiserations, and he told me Haradric had bought Chain some perfume for their upcoming anniversary. I informed Miss Chain and she was offended, wondering why he didn't like her usual perfume. She said she'd rather he'd taken a mistress. Those are some interesting priorities if you ask me, but I didn't care as she gave me the statuette, my first artifact for Jerry's machine. I also asked Miss Chain about her encounter with the vampire, and she said she refused to talk about it until Haradric apologized. Haradric said she was the one that needed to apologize, as he'd seen her with a secret lover. Trouble in paradise indeed. Am I a marriage counselor today? What is going on? Miss Chain said she was asleep, so she hadn't seen anything, and Obviously, Haradric thinks the vampire was her lover, so these two gooses were useless. Although Miss Chain finally made herself useful when she told me that the astrologer had an encounter with vampires a while back. I took the statuette to Jerry, we placed it in the machine and saw the first flashback explaining the history of this strange world. This floating text reminiscent of Star Trek explained the origin of the world. The ancient god had created the world and three priestess sisters to serve him, as well as many people whom he provided for. After death, their souls would float across the ancient bridge to the land of the dead, but like all great stories, stories love spoiled everything. I then witnessed a scene of ancient Haradric secretly meeting with ancient Miss Chain, who apparently is one of the three priestesses. She said they can never be together because of her duty to the ancient god, and Haradric stormed off, vowing not even the ancient god could stop his love. This scene is supposedly from 200 years ago, so Haradric and Miss Chain are immortal? I did not see that one coming, especially with their extremely immature marital woes. Jerry told me to track down the ancient wine flask next. I placed the statue in the artifact display cabinet, and it added plus one quality to the tavern. I returned to the morgue and gave this corpse its final injection, the lie injection, which adds plus one red skull and plus one white skull. And so all up, you can use embalming to add plus five white skulls to a body using those four injections. I dealt with another soul, modifying some body parts in the process, which helped me achieve a relatively decent healing. I grabbed the 13 white skull corpse I'd made with embalming and resurrected zombie number 35, a 32% efficient zombie, by far my best undead worker so far. I placed him on the wine making setup and took this zombie to be embalmed. I gathered a bunch of materials, made another embalming table, and replaced these two tier 1 soul containers with tier 3. I healed yet another soul, continued embalming, and managed to get this fully embalmed zombie to 14 white skulls by giving it better intestines. Okay, I understand what I need to do. I want to try and save all plus 2 or 3 brains, hearts, and intestines because I can easily upgrade them to plus three with the organ modification in the soul room. I think these ones are essentially useless, so I should just have them to turn into reagents or whatever, whatever I want. Basically, I'd finally wrapped my head around improving bodies by this point. This boiled down to using embalming to get plus five skulls and body part modification in the soul room to get all body parts, except for the skeleton, up to plus three white skulls each, which means the theoretical best corpse possible is 26 white skulls. Making some of those became my goal. On day 234, I spoke to the 
astrologer about vampires. He told me he and the previous graveyard keeper had once been attacked by four vampires, but some strange magic had protected them and turned the vampires into jaws. He also. Fuck, I don't know what also said vampires can only drink group O blood and that other blood types give them cavities and ulcers. I dealt with yet another soul and kept embalming ticking along. 38% efficient zombie, let's go. I prayed the prayer for souls thorough cleansing to refresh my sin shard buff and then visited the cook at the refugee camp. She was grateful for the kitchen I made her but found it quite different to her old kitchen back in the town. So I promised to improve it for her a little bit. Cooking table two. Oh, there you go. That's looking a little bit more bougie. Her final task was to make some beehives so the refugees can cultivate their own source of honey. I finally continued with Yurik's questline by informing him I thought the bishop was a great candidate for extremely prideful sin. To get the transformed pride sin shard, we needed to stoke his pride. So I decided to ask the poet Wagner to write some flowery praise for the bishop to read. I collected some profits from the talking skull, bought some oil and beeswax, and collected my graveyard veggies profit too. I spoke to the farmer's son about his encounter with the vampire, and he said he thought it was his dad returning home late but when he called hello it was as if the strange man hadn't heard him and so he'd hid under his blankets much to his shame i told him that if i was just 15 years old i'd have hidden too and he said thanks but i'm 22. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> I also asked him about the ancient wine flask, and he gave it to me, but made me promise not to tell his dad he'd been drinking. I don't know why he's so worried about it since he's 22, but I won't tell little buddy. Rest easy. I bought a bunch of seeds from the farmer, because it's always good to stay on top of the seeds situation. Wagner has disappeared, so we just need to write him a letter. And so I wrote to the poet a letter, asking for some choice words with which to take advantage of the good bishop's ceaseless vanity. I healed another soul, and then used up all my sin shards modifying these body parts. I just need to do plus one red skin skull on the heart and then every time I heal a soul it'll be 100% healed. I finally googled how to place a greeter in front of the talking skull and it turns out the greeter Yorick had in mind was a zombie. <laughs> uh, he's got one of those signs and he's literally chained there. Oh gosh. I healed another soul and decided to store this soul, as my soul's gratitude was maxed out, so there was no point sending it through the portal. Not that I even knew how to use soul's gratitude at this point, but whatever. I gave the ancient wine flask to Jerry, and it was time to watch another flashback. This one depicted the three priestesses granting an audience to the peasants, and it revealed that not only is Miss Chain an ancient priestess, Clotho is too. In this scene, she had a vision from the ancient god, warning of the terror to come. I asked Jerry where he was in all this, as the whole point of this exercise was to learn about his past and he said there's plenty more to come. He told me the next artifacts to collect were the ancient door hinge and legionary helm. I placed the flask on display and then dug up the ancient hinge like three meters away from the tavern. This flashback depicted a body being sent towards the bridge and the land of the dead. Whoa. It's levitating. This old bloke was Diggus, no doubt my best friend Dig, and Clotho came to yell at him to give her the keys to the portal so that she could use the portal to prevent whatever she'd seen in her vision. Dig refused as he feared the portal was too dangerous, and Clotho told him he had cupcakes for brains, which is an extremely accurate statement. So basically what I'm getting from these flashbacks so far is that half the village are immortals that were alive 200 years ago when the whole world went to crap. Fascinating. I checked the mail to find the letter from Wagner containing the flattering poem for the bishop. I built the beehives at the refugee camp, and the the cook was suitably impressed. She taught me a bunch of her culinary secrets as a reward. I literally never bothered with cooking again, so these were useless, but nice to have, I guess. I bought some more gold nuggets and powder from the money lender bloke, which sets me back over two gold each time, by the way. I finally switched my vineyard cues to infinite and grabbed a bag full of grapes and hops, which I chucked in the cellar, before changing the beverage porter's orders so that he'd take gold star wine to the tavern too, since I was no longer worried about running out. By now, I'd managed to fully deck out the soul healer, so it was now full of plus three, plus three body parts. This meant I could turn my sin shards towards making the perfect zombie. I gave this fella a plus three heart, brain, intestines, and flesh, and he was up to 17 white skulls already. I hacked at a number of bodies on day 239, swapping body parts around preparing for embalming. I also cleared out all the crappy organs I had lying around and queued them up to be decomposed in order to free up heaps of storage. I crafted a top up of embalming fluids, queued up a bunch of billets for pyres, and then burnt these four bodies that had been harvested for all their worth while I was going nuts in the morgue. By the way, I did have the more convenient cremation of ovens inside now, but I opted not to use these as they yielded three ash instead of five, and I wanted all the ash I could get. Oh, 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 oh. 
It's beautiful. It's beautiful to behold. There's no doubt about it. I unlocked the rest of the spiritualism tech tree, granting me access to the best grave decorations in the game. I crafted three gold star marble statues with which I crafted a plus 15 quality marble sculpture. And I also crafted a plus 11 grave fence using marble and a gold jewelry detail. I made a second stone cutter and some more trunks in the yard. Zhuzhed up this zombie to 30% efficiency and chucked him on there. I then bombarded the bishop with some grade A flattery. Oh, blessed and mighty highness, higher none could ever be. Overwhelming beauty, kindness, everyone's impressed by thee. Wheresoever you step, the gloom seems to drift a world away. Whensoever you speak, your wisdom drips from every word you say. Pride charged shard. Pride charged shard. It's kind of hard to say. All right, sweet. I banged out another church service, to which the masses said, nice, and then placed my new grave decorations on this crappy body's grave. Look at this. <laughs> now I'll put a 26 heart body in there and that'll be 26 points in one grave. Holy moly. I informed Yurik I had a pride at Sin Shard and he sat down for some soul healing. He said it made him feel a bit funny so he went for a rest but not before finally handing over the instructions to remote crafting. I now had the ability to control most of my crafting devices from the map. So for example I can queue up zombie crafting or alchemy through the map menu rather than running to tell the zombie directly. All I have to do is create a soul receiver at each location. I queued up infinite polished brick of marble as I have ambitions to make lots of those graveyard decorations and made a bunch of chisels and chucked them in a trunk for old mate zombie to use in his polishing efforts. I healed a soul, spent some time noodling around with a bunch of corpses and then grabbed some water to keep up brewman zombies supply of H2O. I placed a soul receiver in my yard and then decided to check on Yurik. He was nowhere to be found and he'd left a note saying he'd headed into town. This was strange as he's supposed to be on the lamb after his crime spree. I found him at the tavern endearing himself to the locals. The merchant was in town so I bought five gold jewelry details from him, as I'll need these to make top tier grave fences. I then modified some skin, flesh, and blood, and continued work on Mr. Zombie. All right, we're adding plus three blood, plus three fat, plus three skin, up to 26. 65% efficient zombie. This is a maxed out zombie. Very juicy. I whacked him on the wine making setup because you know I love wine. And I gave old mate a new job in the yard. As day 243 dawned, I chatted to Yurik about the next two sins to heal, wrath and gluttony. I suggested the Inquisitor was quite an angry fellow and Yurik thought it would be effective to bring him the ashes of a witch. I thought this would make him gleeful rather than wrathful, but fair enough. As for gluttony, we plotted to bring the merchant a most delicious sauce that he'd never encountered before. And surely this would bring out the over eater in him. I added a big old pump to the refugee camp well, bought a bunch of gold goodies from this bloke, instructed the jewelry zombie to keep working away, and then paid Clotho a visit. I asked her if she had any witch's ash for me, and she did, because I guess she likes burning her competition, but she required some honey in exchange. I also asked her to give me a delectable sauce recipe, and she gave me the recipe for poor man's mayonnaise. I built a soul receiver in the morgue, and then harvested organs from a bunch of bodies. I ended up with a nice body pile up out in the bushes. Once day 245 dawned, I wandered back to Clotho with some honey and got a nice dusty pile of witch ash. On my way to the Inquisitor, who conveniently happened to be chilling on Witch Hill like a weirdo today, I remotely queued up some zombie alchemy shenanigans. Very convenient. I thought it would use up the soul's gratitude resource, but it didn't seem to, so I was confused. Anyway, I taunted the Inquisitor with the ash, and I finally realized the genius of Yurik's plan. I explained to the Inquisitor that the witches used the witch ash for occult shenanigans, and he was blasted with a big dose of irony as he realized the witch ash he'd painstakingly created was then used for heretical action. Activities. It made the old fella livid and I got my wrath charged shard. I grabbed some oil, eggs and salt and whipped up some mayo in preparation for the merchant's visit in a few days and then spent some time modifying body parts and managed to get this corpse to 23 white skulls before running out of sin shards. I hit up my zombie vineyards which were at a standstill due to the trunks filling up so I grabbed some grapes and then checked in at the talking skull tavern. One gold 42 because I'm actually selling red wine now it sells for way more. How much it sells for? So red wine sells for about five times more than beer. That was good to know. I chatted to Rosa, my final line of inquiry regarding the vampire visitations. And she informed me she had been bitten by the vampire, but he hadn't enjoyed the taste of her blood, which she found greatly offensive. I understand the feeling. It's sad when you're not delicious. I then used my elite Sherlock Holmes deduction to conclude the vampire was a deaf stranger. And I was immediately suspicious of Master Alaric up at the refugee camp. I went and had a chat with him. And when I say chat with him, I mean I yelled at him and he misunderstood literally 
literally everything I was saying because his ears are about as useful as my nipples. In the end, he called me a fool for believing vampires are real, but I spotted the green sore on his wrist, which the astrologer had told me is a symptom of a vampire on a bad diet. You can't fool me, Alaric. I am Sherlock Holmes reincarnate. I then visited the farmer, as he has the legionary helm artifact I'm after. I asked to enter his home, but he told me he only allows fellow farmers he can talk shop with into his house. He told me to prove my farming chops by bringing him a carrot as big as a log. I then burned four more hollowed out corpses that I'd let pile up, and I reveled in the flames, before lighting the church candles and leading a nice juicy combo prayer church service. I continued prepping corpses and embalming, and once night fell, I went and lurked outside Master Alaric's tent. And sure enough, the silly old bloodsucker went bat mode and flew off towards the village. The vampire hunting shepherd attempted to stop him, but he's so deaf he completely missed that he was being waylaid. I really like how the village watch is wandering around mid cutscene, saying the villagers are safe as we yell at a deaf vampire. Things escalated until Master Alaric whipped out a flashbang, and suddenly we were back in his tent. He randomly stole part of my hearing while I was knocked out, so we no longer had to yell apparently. He said his former captors made him a vampire to torture him, and he only drinks blood when he's absolutely desperate. And he explained that the ancient curse was back, and he was trying to stop it, before thousands of bloodthirsty zombies are unleashed upon the world. I have heaps of zombies, and they're really helpful, so I don't really know what the problem is. He said we needed to find whoever killed the fourth graveyard keeper, my predecessor, as they are the ones who triggered the ancient curse. And then he passed out, desperately thirsty for blood. I headed to the morgue, grabbed some blood, and returned it to him so he could slurp it up. He thought the corpse blood wasn't particularly tasty, but he perked up nonetheless. He said the best place to start our investigation was tracking down the vampires that tortured him. He also gave me his vampiric sun cream, which I took to Haradric and claimed I'd taken it off the vampire's dead body, just to make the village think the vampire business was concluded so they'd stop snooping around. I visited Clotho and asked her to enlarge my carrot, and for some reason she took that Dneska se prost. Dneska ne content den, dneska je sleeping den request the wrong way. Eventually, she took my true meaning and said she could, but only if I organized a date for her with Corey. I healed another soul and chopped up the corpse, and then headed out to the scene of the astrologer's vampire shenanigans. Da -da. ...of 30 years ago. What is this? The witch's eye put me in a weird trance to see visions of the past. The visions told of the astrologer and old graveyard keeper making a deadly cocktail and getting outrageously drunk. And just as they were vomiting and falling over themselves, the four vampires attacked, only to be turned into jawbones by some mysterious magic. Lucky for me, one of the jawbones was still buried here, so I dug it up. I spent some time working on corpses. I was progressively improving multiple at once by this point, and then I asked Corey if he wanted to go on a date with a beautiful woman. He said, absolutely. And then I told him the beautiful woman was Clotho, and he said, crazy the old ladies aren't quite his type. I then framed the date as a business meeting, and Corey was all about that because he loves sweet, sweet coins, so I guess it will be the old bait and switch. Lure him in with the promise of money, and before he knows it, he's got a wife and 13 kids. I also gave the merchant his mayo, and he enjoyed it so much the feather in his cap stood on end, and I got my gluttony sin shard. I then fully modified some blood, the final piece of the puzzle for this corpse, bringing it up to 26 white skulls. I buried it with the shiny grave decorations. 26 from one grave. That's crazy. I performed the second soul healing on Yurik's soul, and I honestly had no idea what this was doing to him. I guess it somehow cleansed him of all his past gluttony and wrath. Either way, he was once again tired after the procedure, so he went. <laughs> meant to have a rest. I kept my alchemy production chugging along and then chopped up a bunch of trees because each tree drops a couple of sticks. These sticks kept chisel production moving, which in turn kept polished marble production moving. I made five more speed potions, which was frustrating because it used up all the blood I had on hand, but there's no way I was going without my zippy run speed. I had a snooze and when I awoke, this inquisitor, Lady Beatrice, was watching me sleep. She said I had a most excellent beard. She also sprayed a weird perfume on me and she told me she was hunting down the escaped prisoners. I pretended I had no idea what she was talking about about, but she was disturbingly close to finding the refugees. I spent the night working on corpses and body parts and got this corpse up to 20 white skulls. And on day <laughs> I don't know. Rule me, 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 me. I'm just like, how? Five minutes, three, four, five. You open your eyes, you see the other side. 
и ги затваряш за 10 тъко. Да. <съща> Звам глиеш и си ти се скарах на един и половина с отварени очи и, и, и ти веднага почна глиеш някакво стреснато към чата и стана някакъв сериозен наистина много на добре. Още 10 минути. Не, до и половина. Може да върнеш чаращния вода чище между един и един и половина. Ай, не е до един, е. Да, да. До един и половина. Върни си вчерашния вод, смешник. Чуй. 51 I crafted a bunch of these top quality grave fences using all the gold jewelry details I'd been buying. I placed some of these on the graves that were as yet unfenced and popped the rest in a trunk. I paid Clotho a visit and asked her if she can disenchant the jawbone, which I guess would turn it back into a vampire, but that was beyond her. She did give me the recipe for memory tincture and said I could spray some in my eyeballs while holding the jawbone to learn more about its story. I also told her I'd successfully secured her a date and she gave me a big carrot. <laughs> I got a big carrot. I got a big boy carrot. I healed another soul, got this body up to 23 whites. Skulls and decided to resurrect it into zombie number 36, just to make space in the morgue. I then made some memory tincture. It's bringing in both eyes. Ow. I had to spray it three times before it finally worked, but eventually I saw a vision. This must be the four vampires that attacked the astrologer. And this mystery woman ordered them to turn Master Alaric into a vampire as a means of torture. It seems like Alaric was telling the truth, but who is the woman in the gold and black cloak? I healed yet another soul and got my second zombie up to max efficiency. You can see he's also got seven red skulls, but these have no effect on zombies, so happy days. I chucked him on beer production. I checked on Yurik and once again he was missing in action. This time he was hanging out with Kresvo and rambling about how the village is in shambles. Some more strange behavior from the mysterious visitor. I then paid the talking skull a visit, and as you can see, I'd sold exclusively red wine as I'd filled up the barman's inventory since it's more profitable. I restocked the cellar with grapes and hops and then gave my weekly sermon, refreshing my sin shard booster buff. I then gave the farmer his enormous carrot. This impressed him and he let me in his house. I immediately stole the legionary helm from his bedside chest. Sorry, mate, but you really shouldn't trust a bloke with a giant carrot. I took it to the archeological machine and watched another movie with Jerry. This scene told of four men plotting, Heradric, Kresvold, Jove, and Lucius. Obviously we know Heradric and Kresvold, but I'm not sure who the other two are. They're definitely bad influences though. Heradric was reluctant, but ultimately they convinced him to find a way to steal the keys to the portal off Diggis so that they could betray the ancient god and live the lives they want. The next three artifacts on the list were the ancient lockpick, Priest's Medallion and Legionary Dagger. I immediately asked Dig for the Priest's Medallion, but he went on a rant about cake and how he needed booze as a preservative. I then asked Kresvold about the Legionary Dagger, and he said he'd give it to me if I spoiled Heradric's happy mood. He suggested I get Miss Charm to perform in my tavern to annoy him. I love petty behavior for the sake of making people unhappy, so that sounded like a great plan to me. And then I asked the Miller about the ancient lockpicks. He told me someone stole his invitation to perform in a comedy show, so I snooped around the wheat to figure out what had happened. I found the beekeeper being a weirdo. Honestly, I had no idea what the heck was going on, but the quest told me to talk to the lighthouse keeper next, so off I went. Sure enough, it was the aspiring comedian lighthouse keeper that stole the invitation. I told him I'd host a comedy show for him to perform in my tavern if he gave the invitation back, and he agreed, but he said he needed a drum kit or his jokes won't land. I headed to the Talking Skull and found I now had the option to do a comedy show, so I hosted it, and honestly, the lighthouse keeper killed it. I laughed like this at his funnies. <laughs> and he gave me the Miller's invitation back. I visited Yurik and we discussed the final three sins and decided our target for Sloth was the Astrologer, for Lust was Miss Charm and for Envy was Snake. I spent some time working on corpses and as day 254 dawned, I warned the Marquis about Lady Beatrice and he asked me to upgrade the camp some more as it seemed clear they were in for the long haul hiding out up here. I immediately built another tent. I then paid Miss Charm a visit. I paid her 20 silver to come perform at my tavern sometime and then offered to have a master dancer teach her some sensual dance moves and Yurik did the rest. Goodness gracious me.
Cover your eyes, everyone. This PG-13 Plus display earned me the Lust Sin Shard. I healed another soul, and with that, I'd filled up all 12 storage slots in my soul containers. I then made a bunch of porcelain funeral urns with all that ash I've been collecting, because I wanted to see what the deal was with columbariums. Okay. These provide 20 quality, but they take up an awkward amount of space, more than one grave worth, so I figured they weren't worth it. I'd rather max out as many individual graves as possible. I brought Dig some booze I'd concocted, and he immediately lit it on fire for some reason. We've got some Molotov cocktail business going on here. And I I received the priest's medallion in return. I also informed Kresvold I'd convinced Miss Charm to perform in my tavern, so he gave me the legionary dagger. I returned to the morgue to heal a soul and keep the embalming train rolling, and then asked Jerry if he knew anything about the vampire queen from the flashback. He said there are only two concrete sources of truth in this world, housewives and ghosts, and he promised to chat up the ghosts to see if they knew anything. I also made Snake unbearably envious by making up some rumors about the greatest heist ever being pulled off in the town. Since Snake fancies himself the greatest thief in the world, this rumor worked a treat and I earned my Myself the envy charged sin shard. I then finally worked out a great use for remote crafting. That's actually very useful. I can turn the embalmings on. From, from a distance. Since each injection takes a few minutes, this was indeed very handy. I then cleared some space down here in the morgue and placed two more embalming tables so I can improve more bodies at once. And I worked day 256 away in the morgue. I then acted on some amazing advice I received in a comment. Clotho sells some of the stuff that costs blood to make. Alcohol. Should more still obvious. Lie. Costs blood. Five speed potions though, that is huge. This finding meant Clotho's shop became a regular visit ongoing, and I barely had to use blood for alchemy for the rest of the run. I found I was out of water for beer production, but I really didn't care anymore since wine sells better anyway. I restocked embalming fluid, and then visited the refugee camp and found there was enough happiness in the air for me to upgrade the storehouse. And then I asked Jerry if the ghost had whispered him anything of interest. He said there was a ghost weirdo lurking on the eighth level of the dungeon, whose leg had been taken by the vampire queen. He said I needed an amulet of communist donkey hair, human intestines and wax in order to make this particular ghost appear. I had a stack of 45 sin shards piled up, so I perfected a bunch of body parts. This is quite a tedious process, as you have to do it one skull at a time. I also properly organized my storage, getting rid of some crappy organs that were somehow still lying around, and designating racks to hold plus three, plus two, and plus one white skull body parts respectively. I visited the astrologer, and since he's so sad and lazy, all I had to do to earn the sloth sin shard from him was ask him how his day was going. Although I will say the game is being a bit unfair conflating depression and laziness. Shout out to people fighting depression. You're not lazy, you're unwell. Get the help you need and keep fighting. Not you though, Mr. Astrologer, you just need to get over it. I gave the Miller his comedy show invitation back, in return for which I received the ancient lockpick, and I asked Donkey for some hair. I told him I wanted to frame it and put it above my bed to inspire me to be a better communist, and he loved this idea. Ooh. <laughs> that was gnarly. <laughs> I made the pagan amulet of spirit summoning and wandered down to the eighth level of the dungeon. The first thing the one-legged ghost asked me was, why do you have that disgusting amulet? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry trolled me. I asked him for help tracking down the vampire queen, but he said that helping people goes against his philosophy of not caring about anyone or anything. That is a pretty gangster attitude, to be fair. I crafted a bunch of candles using beeswax I'd bought from the beekeeper, lit up the church, and prayed the combo prayer. I then performed the final soul healing for sloth, lust, and envy on Yurik, and afterwards he said he felt like part of him had been erased. That sounded worrying, and once again he went off to have a rest. I made a bunch of pigskin paper from bat wings, which I turned into clean paper, which I used to make a bunch of flies at the printing press and then use the flies to host a Miss Charm special. Ooh, everything went red. Sensual. Oh, this is banger music. Yeah. Wobble bobble doo doo doo. Got the spotlight up there. Look at that. Quasal. Quasal. Love. <laughs> it's a banger. Now give me gold, everyone. Let's see. Let's see how this does. One gold 30. That's not bad. Red wine seems to work well with the Miss Charm song event, so this became my default way to spend reputation stars for the rest of the run. I then watched some more movies with Jerry. First up, The Ancient Lockpick. This one was set at Ancient Witch Hill. Haradric had tied up Diggis and stolen the portal keys. Kresvold, Jove, and Lucius joined him to activate the portal. Apparently the portal grants wishes, so they essentially asked it to overthrow the ancient god. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
the snake in the garden. Oh, yeah. Master. Next up was the priest's medallion. Three years on and it's Diggis, old school and faithful to the old god, versus the master, anti-religion and pro-unemployment benefits. The people appear unable to resist the allure of a government handout, so public opinion sways in the master's favor. The traditions of the world are crumbling and the ancient god is slowly being forgotten. Next was the legionary dagger, and this showed a scene in which the aqueduct had run dry. The levitating corpses were stuttering along their way, and Diggis despaired that the ancient god was abandoning humanity due to the master's heresy. The next two artifacts to hunt for with a logger's belt buckle and some clay shards. By the way, this is what the artifact cabinet looked like at this point. I upgraded the campfire at the refugee camp and this place is really starting to come together. Next up, the Marquis requested one more tent and a workshop. I did some chores, including switching the zombie vineyard to grow seven parts grape and one part hops because I no longer really cared about beer. I spent a spell in my favorite place, the morgue, and then had a chat with Yurik. He seemed in better spirits and planned a night out at the village before heading off to adventure towards whatever was next for him. I then recalled something I noticed earlier the big stained glass window in the church had six spaces available, and I had a suspicion. Sure enough, I was able to place the six special sin shards to complete the image. I headed out to Clotho's, collecting sticks on the way because for some reason I was always running out of sticks. I bought out her inventory of useful reagents and potions. I then asked for the shepherd's help with the spirit in the dungeon. The shepherd is a certified goose on the loose obsessed with hunting monsters, so he thought we were there to kill the ghost, but it worked out regardless somehow, and the one-legged apparition told us the vampire queen had told him he could get his leg back in the misty quagmire. The shepherd told told me the Marquis's dad, Teodoro Senior, had found the Necronomicon there, and the Deathly Book had driven he and his wife mad, resulting in their murder by the Inquisition. I modified some body parts and cooked myself up another max efficiency zombie, zombie number 37, and I whacked this one on the Alchemy Decomposer. I collected a cheeky 1 gold 20 from the Talking Skull, and 1 gold 65 from Graveyard Veggies, and then had another snooze. I awoke to Haradric and Kresvold's disgruntlement, and frankly boys, I know about your betrayal of Dig 200 years ago, so I'm pretty sure you don't have the moral high ground on whatever this is about. In any case, they escorted me to Heradric's tavern. Apparently, Yurik had quite a night last night. He'd gotten wildly inebriated and destroyed much of the village before disappearing. And since I was the one who'd been providing him lodgings, apparently the responsibility fell on me to fix everything up. I chatted to Smiler about Yurik's madness, and he told me he'd heard screams earlier. Yurik crying about how he'd lost himself, which I guess is the moral of this tale. Don't get a weird machine to mess with your soul, or you'll go crazy. I burned some bodies and worked on improving this zombie before collecting a bunch of materials and repairing this table that Yurik must have body slammed. I then did one of the most random quests ever, which in a game like this is saying something. I asked the logger for his belt buckle, and he refused to give it to me because he's a big fan of it. The beekeeper came out of nowhere and said he'd help me get the buckle, but only if I dug up a barrel of honey that he buried for some reason. He couldn't dig it up because he has enemies everywhere, apparently. He also threatened to kill me with his attack bees. I dug up the honey like five meters away and then gave it to the weird bloke, and he gave me some honey plaster for the logger's bad back. I gave it to him and it worked a treat, and he gave me the belt buckle in return. We love a happy ending. I then talked to Adam the Potter, who I honestly had no idea was a character in this game until now. I asked him for the clay shards, but he said I must improve my tavern first for some reason. I repaired the blacksmith's outhouse door, which must have been knocked off its hinges by Yurik's explosive diarrhea, and then returned to the morgue to deal with the body. While there, I yoinked the max efficiency zombie from the brewery and put it on the alchemy table, because as we've established, I no longer care about beer, but alchemy is definitely useful. I gave my weekly sermon, refreshing my sin shard buff yet again, and then brought the ancient belt buckle to Jerry. This scene was set another two years in the future and Jove and Lucius were telling the masses that the master had died. With his dying breath, he'd appointed Jove king. That doesn't sound suspicious to me at all. His first act as king was to declare a holy war on the ancient god. I grabbed some materials and upgraded the tavern, enlarging it, which made room for some barrels and extra tables, and the quality rose all the way to 47. I returned to Adam and informed him of the upgrade, and his next task for me was to get rid of the two hooligans that lurk outside his house at night and torture him. I then cleaned up after Yurik some more. I repaired this knocked over egg basket, the beekeeper's hives, and Adam's pottery table. Next job on the list was to clean up a cow that Yurik had painted. Painted? <laughs> I got distracted by a fresh corpse and was able to get yet another zombie up to max efficiency. I put this one on the logging tree because sometimes I need to craft heaps of wood materials and I was sick of having a 10% efficient slow noob zombie replenish my log supply. I then discovered Yorick was the one pestering poor Adam. Oh, Yorick's been trolling him. <laughs> I told him to give it a rest, or I'd fire him from the tavern that he works at 24-7 for no pay. Somehow that threat worked, and he left to go bother some other loser. I repaired the farmer's lantern, another of Yurik's victims, and then washed the big moo-moo with a handful of ash. The last things to clean up were the door of Kresvold's outhouse, which Yurik's diarrhea must have blasted all the way over here. It had Sard the Town written on it. And finally, this clothesline. And with that, I was done cleaning up after crazy Yurik. I told Adam that I'd scared off the ghost that had been bothering and earned myself the clay shards. I healed another soul, and then built the Marquis's 
workshop at the refugee camp. I then spoke to Snake about the Keeper's book that Yurik had left behind, as it was still missing one page. I kind of lost track of the story, I'm not gonna lie, but basically he told me something that led me to believe Jerry might have it. And sure enough, the missing page was randomly behind Jerry's crate. The reason this is important is because it explained the story behind Smiler. He had been an 18 year old man with an illness, and they'd attempted to heal him with the soul healer, but what they'd been left with was a soulless body, and Smiler, the disembodied soul. Smiler's last wish was to be sent through the soul portal to the land of the dead. Farewell, good Smiler. And with that, the Better Save Soul DLC questline was completed. This DLC definitely had the most lackluster story, but it did introduce some very cool mechanics in the soul healing, body part modifying, and remote crafting. It also had plenty of hilarious moments. I asked the Marquis about the Misty Quagmire on day 268, and he was immediately struck by fear. He refused to talk about it, but said he'd help me once I'd finished building up the refugee camp for him. I chatted to this Undertaker lady. She told me she needed five iron chisels and ten wood wedges. I went and grabbed them for her, and the next thing she wanted was a workbench. I then paid the talking skull a visit. Four gold forty. How many days has it been? It's only been a few days. Holy dooly. The recent tavern upgrades were paying dividends. No doubt, no doubt. I headed downstairs and gave the clay shards to Jerry. This scene showed the mindless destruction of the ancient village. Haradric was clearly regretting the carnage he'd set in motion, and he was fearful for Chain's safety. After all, she is the whole reason he wanted to overthrow the ancient god in the first place. Kreswold assured him she'd no doubt fled to the swamp. Next up, Jerry told me to look out for the amulet of the ancient god and some ancient shackles. I spoke to the lighthouse keeper about the amulet of the ancient god. God. And he asked me if a loud and obese woman had been asking about him in the tavern, and he refused to give me the amulet. I then developed a plan to get high quality bodies into the graveyard while using the least amount of sin shards possible, since they were still quite a scarce resource. In short, I fully improved all body parts except for blood and fat, because those cost too many sin shards. Using this method, I made two 20 white skull corpses. I buried them both in the graveyard. I crafted a bunch of gold star marble busts, which I used to make a couple of 15 quality grave statues, and whacked these on the graves. I enjoyed a glorious church service bought some sauerkraut, chopped every little tree I laid eyes on to get sticks, and queued up a bunch of silver quality chisels. I dug up copious amounts of sand, which I chucked in the furnace to turn into glass, and then dug up copious amounts of clay to be turned into clay bowls. I also queued up a bunch of polishing paste. I dealt with a body, did a collection of grapes from the vineyard, and queued up a bunch of lenses using the glass and polishing paste I'd spent ages crafting. I also made a bunch more trunks in the cellar, as it would be a disaster if I ran out of space for wine, which I was still drinking constantly by the way. The alcohol continues to fuel me. I transported two more full bags of produce from the vineyard, and I hosted another of Miss Charm's performances at the Talking Skull. She whipped out the exact same song, but the people loved it nonetheless. A cheeky 2 gold 75 just like that. I built the Undertaker's workplace at the refugee camp, kept things ticking along in the morgue, and then paid Snake a visit. He told me it had been over a month since his cultists had captured an Inquisitor and drowned them in the river, so he believed they needed motivation. He said he'd steal the amulet of the ancient god off the lighthouse keeper if I hosted a rat race in my tavern, because apparently a rat race will be a great motivational tool. I queued up 15 more silver star chisels and then built the rat race table, which looks quite marvelous actually. <laughs> I guess those are the lanes for the rats. You love to see it. Does that mean I can do like a Right races event. Okay, I just need two reputation. I was sick of constantly telling this zombie to break down stone, iron, and marble chunks, so I decided to rejig the way materials were delivered from the quarry. I made two stone cutters up here and had zombie bros break down the stone and iron chunks on site, and instructed the porter zombies to only take marble chunks plus all the broken down materials. This means I'll only have to break down marble back at base, meaning I can just queue it up infinitely and never have to think about it again. I informed the undertaker her workbench was ready, and her next task for me was to deliver five gold stars chisels. I then spent almost two days in the morgue, and by the end of it I had buried two more 20 white skull bodies in the graveyard. I could have made these into highly efficient zombies, but now that alchemy and winemaking were at max, I didn't feel a particular need to improve the efficiency of anything else. I gave my weekly sermon, and my efforts in increasing the graveyard quality by about 50 only made me like four silver, so that was definitely not the most inspiring money-making venture, but at least the graves look nice. I built the final tent at the refugee camp, made a bunch more trunks in the workyard, and as day 278 dawned, I went digging in search of the ancient shackles. I found them down here. I made some black paint, which I used to make ink, which I used to make a rather ridiculous amount of flyers. And I used these to host a family-friendly rat race. <laughs> what the heck, man? That was a hugely inspiring race, no doubt, no doubt. I gave the Undertaker her five chisels, and she taught me a bunch of useless grave decoration recipes in return. With that, the Marquis also offered me his thanks, and a nice juicy reward. One gold. Oh, the marble heads are useful. 
Oh, universal bag. These bags take up one inventory slot and offer an additional nine slots. Very juicy. I chatted to the Tanner who said her son was fired and fined when he sneezed during one of the king's ceremonies, which is fair enough. No one likes a sneezer. And she said she had no way of supporting him now that she'd been forced to flee. And so she asked me to build her a new workshop. I had zombie alchemists brew up some tanning agent. I grabbed some complex parts and made four more universal bags out of human skin. Very disgusting, but very handy. I immediately filled three of the universal bags with building materials so that I'd always have stuff on hand for fetch quests and building activities. No more teleporting home every time I need something. I chatted to Snake and he already knew of the roaring success of my rat race. So he'd burgled the amulet for me. Now that the refugee camp was up to scratch, the Marquis was ready to talk to me about the Misty Quagmire. Despite his hatred of the place, he eventually relented and took me there. It was predictably creepy. The witch's eye detected a ritual performed using the Necronomicon here long ago, conducted by the Vampire Queen and her minions. It involved that weirdo in the dungeon's leg for some reason, so I was able to dig that up. I also saw another woman, hidden in the bushes, who was discovered by the Vampire Queen, and for some reason she killed all the vampires accompanying her. A strange sequence of events. But I was able to find a vampire shoe. Perhaps some memory tincture to the eyeball will reveal more. I concocted three more memory tinctures and once again it took three sprays to the eyeball but eventually it worked. I saw a vision of a weird bloke Carl chilling in the bath. He was one of the vampires working for the vampire queen and though his brothers weren't fans of working for her he insisted the pay was worth it and he spoke of one day buying the post office with the donkeys and so I had a clue. I should speak to donkey and figure out if this Carl bloke is his master. I gave the one-legged ghost his leg back and he was over the moon. I asked him what happened to not caring about anything and he said screw you good times. Jerry and I then watched the Amulet of the Ancient God movie. Heradric dragged the wounded Diggus into the priestess's camp, hidden in the swamp. Clotho was furious at him and asked why he had betrayed them, and he explained it was for his love of Miss Chain. She laughed at the irony of that because Miss Chain had been captured and was on death row, and so Heradric ran off to rescue her. Diggus, for his part, had eaten two golden apples in order to survive this long, and we all know that golden apples make you a genius. And so Clotho insisted he must write the Necronomicon with his newfound brilliance so that they can destroy their enemies with it. And if he does that, they'll heal him. Next up was the Ancient Shackle, which showed Heradric rescuing Miss Chain, insisting to her that they could now be together, that their love could blossom. Love? She asked. How can there be love when the entire world is ruined? The next artifacts on the list were the Ancient Pickaxe, Ancient Keys, and a mystery relic buried somewhere on Witch Hill. Adam had the Ancient Keys, so I tried to gain entry to his house by asking if I could see his exquisite pottery collection. He was unnecessarily suspicious and ended up demanding that I prove I'm a top tier potter myself before he'd let me in. I brought him some porcelain pitchers, but he wasn't impressed. He wanted something rarer. I healed a soul and I'd saved up over 60 sin shards, so I got to work putting together another 20 white skull body. While in the middle of that, I ran into Donkey and I asked him who his master was. Turns out Vampire Carl did indeed fulfill his dream of owning the post office, so I asked Donkey to bring him to me. I said I wanted to lecture him about the sins of private property, and this got Donkey on board with the plan. He's a sucker for anything anti-capitalist. I buried the body I'd been working on, and before I knew it, Donkey was back with his tied up master Carl. I attempted to interrogate him, but as soon as I mentioned the vampire queen in the black and gold cloak, his lips sealed shut. Jerry told me my interrogation technique was terrible, so I enlisted the help of the shepherd. If anyone can get this bloke to talk, it's the unhinged goose on the loose. He tried his best, which somehow involved me eating garlic and blowing my stinky breath in Carl's face, but nothing worked until the shepherd began singing. His voice was so bad that Carl immediately folded. Carl told me the woman in the black and gold cloak wasn't a vampire queen at all. She was a powerful magician who spoke in old-timey language. They were working for her because she promised to cure them of their bloodthirst, but she betrayed them. He told me that in the Misty Quagmire, when she was enacting the ritual with the Necronomicon, the spy in the bushes was a woman with red hair. The vampires had been ordered to kill her, but when the woman in the black and gold cloak saw who it was, she had killed all the vampires in a rage. Perhaps the red-haired woman survived. Could it be Miss Chain? I headed up to Witch Hill and found this digging spot up here, where I found the clay pot of tar. I then asked Miss Chain about the incident in the Misty Quagmire, and she immediately got rather defensive. I apologized, but insisted I must hear her story as I'm trying to stop the ancient curse. She said she couldn't tell me because if she did, they'd kill her sister Clotho. She ran off, but I tracked her down on the beach and asked her to explain. She told me it was Clotho who did the Necronomicon ritual. It was her sister who had killed the fourth keeper and unleashed the ancient curse. Oh dear, the, the drama, it's peak drama. Miss Chain had indeed been the one in the bushes watching the ritual, and when Clotho realized she'd ordered the vampires to kill her own sister, she'd vaporized them all and then returned to her hut and drunk a wild cocktail of potions in an attempt to kill herself. She didn't die though, she only succeeded in destroying her memory. Sunday had rolled around, so it was sermon time, and then I put together and buried another two 20 white skull corpses. I built the Tanner's workshop, and for my next task, the Tanner asked me to put together an animal farm for her. I informed Alaric that Clotho was the one responsible for the return 
return of the ancient curse, and we immediately went to confront her. The only problem was she has amnesia and is rather crazy. She thought that Master Alaric was here to sweep her off her feet in the greatest love story ever told. This was rather frustrating, but Alaric came up with a plan. Black magic. Oh lordy. Oh. It's getting out of hand. We went inside her rather foggy mind somehow, and I answered a bunch of Graveyard Keeper trivia to help restore Clotho's memory. I gave only correct answers because I have an IQ of at least 13, and Master Alaric was confident it had worked, but somehow it didn't. Someone or something interfered, and Clotho remained an amnesiac lunatic obsessed with getting married to Master Alaric. The good master fell into despair and basically gave up on stopping the ancient curse. I had a snooze, and when I awoke, guards surrounded my house. They said I was under arrest in the name of King Joe the Seventh and escorted me to the mountain fort. Haradric had been captured too, and our crime was harboring the refugees, and our punishment was to be burned at the stake. Lady Beatrice was there, and she appeared to be the one who had tracked us down and turned us into the Lord Commander. He quoted a law regarding heretics as justification for roasting us alive, but Haradric came in clutch with the counter law, detailing that that only applies if the involved defendants have hairy feet, if the crime involves cattle, and if it occurs during odd years. Good thinking with the loopholes, Haradric, although I do have very hairy feet. Anyway, the Lord Commander let us go, but he made clear he was coming with a vengeance for the refugees. I spent some time in the morgue, and I was making use of these convenient crematoriums by this point, as I no longer cared about saving up ash. I then tried to buy the ancient pickaxe from Kukul. He said he'd consider it, but only if I helped him with his hump first. He wanted to look like everyone else. I asked the merchant if he had any bougie vases for Adam, but I was too late. He'd just sold them to the beekeeper. It's well established that the beekeeper is insane, so it turned out he'd bought the vases because he knew Adam wanted them, and he believed Adam is his nemesis Hornet Man. I suggested we poison the vases and give them to Adam. For some reason, Dig had stolen his poisoned honey though. And let's be honest, I had no idea what was going on. I just ended up having an absurd conversation with the old fella, which eventually resulted in me getting this poisoned cake. I took it to the beekeeper, we smushed it in the vases, and I took the vases to Adam and simply warned him not to eat the weird poisonous substance. Because as much as I do enjoy desecrating corpses on the daily, I don't really want to murder the local potter. He finally allowed me inside his home and I yoinked the ancient keys. I wandered over to Clotho and asked her if she could help with Kukul's hunchback. She gave me a scroll that should do the trick, as long as I also had a dark organ. I crafted a bunch of grave fences, filling up more than an entire trunk, and then as I ran to visit Kukul, I sang this classic. And shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Humpback, shoulders, knees and toes. He's on toes. And that's how you can tell I have two small children. Anyway, I showed Kukul the scroll, and he told me he'd be back tomorrow night with a dark organ. I headed to the refugee camp and warned the Marquis that the Lord Commander's wrath was heading his way, and I implored him to flee. But he was done running, and he wanted my help building up the camp's defenses. It was time to stand and fight. Honestly, that sounds like a terrible plan since this camp is full of rich people who have never fought in their entire lives, but I didn't argue. I randomly bought a whole bunch of dairy from Rosa, I genuinely have no idea why, and then healed another blue orb. I did a quick zombie inventory and decided I could use some higher quality zombies. So I resurrected zombie number 38, modified a bunch of body parts and hacked at him until he had max efficiency. I chucked him onto saw some flitch. He goes fast. He zooms along. Good one, mate. I snagged this zombie to work on next, but as night arrived, I ducked over to visit Kukul again. He'd brought a dark organ, so we were ready to cast the spell. Boom, boom, bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Boom, 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 bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Boom, boom, bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Your hump's still there. But now I have a hump. <laughs> Hunchback squirrels. <laughs> so the spell sort of worked. It didn't heal his hunchback, but it did cause him to see everyone else as hunchbacked. So I guess he technically looked the same as everyone else now, at least from his perspective. He wasn't pleased though, so he refused to give me the ancient axe. I tried a different tact, offering free drinks at my tavern. He agreed, but asked me to upgrade the tavern a bit first. So I removed all the old tables and built new ones. It took a bit of doing because I had to shoo all these nerds out of the way, but I got there eventually. And with these fancy tables, the tavern quality shot up to 75. I hosted yet another of Miss Charm's performance and with the newly improved tavern quality, I earned a whopping 4 gold and 10 silver. I headed up to the refugee camp and finally built the farm animal area for the tanner. I think this is a prime example of bad priorities, as the camp could be attacked any moment, so I really should have started building up defenses first but whatever. My next task was to buy a cow and hens to put in there. I was also able to purchase these bags from her, and these are bigger than the universal bags. The difference is they can only hold a specific type of item, food, potions, or building materials. I don't carry potions with me everywhere, so that one was useless, but the food and building
builder's bags were genius. I filled the builder's bag up exactly as you'd expect, and I was able to carry more wine than ever in my new food bag. Wonderful news for my rampant alcoholism. I dealt with another corpse and then wandered back to Kukul yet again to inform him that my tavern should now be up to his lofty standards. He was pleased and he finally gave me the ancient pickaxe. I then went to church. I probably have close to a thousand faith now, so I don't really need to do this every week, but like the candles at least, I could just relax on the candles, but I gotta get as much faith as possible. Great salmon. I then bought a cow from Rosa. It took some convincing since her cows are her best friends. But I said, if you love someone, set them free. And she thought that was profound. She asked for more wisdom. So I said, to love a cow means to sell it for one gold. True words were never spoken. So she sold me her cow. I also bought some hens from this chicken farm. Oh, there's the cow and chickens. Nice. It's quite a nice settlement they've got going here now. Beautiful. Completing this last quest for the Tanner unlocked access to purchase the recipes for the builder's bag. So I made myself a second one. I visited the talking skull and there was already three gold 30 waiting for me. Business is a booming. I then brought the ancient pickaxe to Jerry. This scene was set two years after the beginning of King Jove's holy war on the ancient God. And it showed their final act of war. Sacrificing the final symbol of the old faith. It's not a good plan guys. It's just not a good plan. That looked pretty cool though. Oh, that's the, that's the bridge. That's the bridge to nowhere in the east of the map. There you go. Next up were the ancient keys, and this depicted an imprisoned Heradric on the day before his execution. Apparently, Heradric had given himself up after rescuing Chain, as their love had been unable to prosper and he was racked with guilt. Kresvold managed to pay him one last visit, and he explained that this new world was one of repression, trials, and execution. And now, thanks to the destruction of the bridge, walking dead were on the loose. Kresvold said he didn't want to see his friend die, and Heradric responded epically, then you'll just have to close your eyes. Next was the clay pot of tar, and this took us to the scene of Heradric's birth. King Jove decreed that no one was allowed to say or think that the Walking Dead was his fault, and he also decreed that everyone should believe it was the pagans' fault. That sounded like a very convincing argument to me. Then, just as the burning was to commence, a flashbang came out of nowhere and Kresvold rescued Heradric from the flames. Jerry then randomly told me a story, one that I thought might be a clue to his identity. He told me King Jove's impatient heir cut off his dad's head and buried the head separately from the body. Hmm. Next on the list of artifacts to collect were the priestess's ring and the priest's signet. Also, check out this artifact museum update. All right, let's, let's do a little experiment, people. Watch the pace of a 10% zombie. Pretty slow, pretty flaming slow. But you know, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Now, a 65% zombie. This will obviously be six and a half times faster, but... And that, my friends, is the difference between a crappy zombie and a legend zombie. I spent some time working in the morgue and I had so many organs flying around by this point that I needed more storage again. So I added another three mortuary racks. I perfected another zombie and chucked him in the yard and then paid Dig a visit. Ding dong, bing bang bong. I asked for the priest's signet, but he said he likes to put honey on it and lick it, so he won't part with it easily. He wanted in on the rat racing, so he asked me if I could get the lighthouse keeper's best rat and then we could talk. The lighthouse keeper's rats had quite inconveniently been stolen, so he told me to visit Kukul, who apparently sells rats. I buried another 20 white skull body, and on day 292, I paid the farmer a visit. Apparently, the priestess's ring was his wife's. When I asked about it, he got extremely angry. So I asked his son, who said she was a lovely woman, but sickly, and since she died, his father had been devastated. I asked the miller, the farmer's brother, and he said she had been an incredible healer. In fact, she'd been accused of being a witch. So he suggested I ask Clotho. I did, and she said she could use a compliment for me first. So I told her all three of her chins were attractive. Somehow she could remember all this, so I guess her amnesia is selective, but she told me the farmer's wife was Bella, her and Shane's sister, and the third priestess. She'd overused her healing magic and died as a result. I went to commiserate with the farmer, and he explained she was such a loving person that she couldn't help but use her healing magic, as she thought that one life in exchange for many was worth it. I said, that's nice, mate, but can I have her ring? And he told me he had two of her rings. One was buried in her grave, and the other was the only thing he had left to remember her. I had the option to buy the ring off him for one gold, but there was no way I was doing that. <laughs> oh, zero percent. Oh my gosh. Zero percent rotten body. And I assume if I chuck it on here, I can... Yep, there's a ring. Got any decent organs? Nah. I then disposed of the priestess's thoroughly rotten body in the most fitting way I could think of. Ah. Float well, O oh farmer's wife, Bella. You cured many people while you were alive. And now that you are dead, you shall float. Goodness me, that was a touching eulogy. 
I truly know how to honor the dead, don't I? I built some defensive stakes around the refugee camp, dealt with another body, and then tried to buy a rat off Kukul. Unfortunately, he was sold out, and he told me he'd sold his best rat to the Baron. I bought it off him for one gold. Man, these quests really make you run around like a goose on the loose, don't they? I hit up my tavern, which had earned over five gold in my absence, and I got Miss Charm to perform yet again, earning another four gold 25. Have I mentioned that business is a boomin'? I waited for Dig to emerge from his weird little pot barrel hole thing. Ding dong bing da dong dong. He's your super rat, you weirdo. And with that, I finally earned my priest's signet. I scooped up a bunch of clay, check out that scooping technique, and put a bunch of clay balls onto craft. I also crafted five steel swords, as I'll need these for the Marquis's next quest, which is to equip the refugees with weaponry. I then watched the Priestess's Ring movie with Jerry. This showed ancient Clotho at her 200 years ago attempt to kill thousands of people with the Necronomicon, not to be confused with her 30 years ago attempt when she succeeded in breaking the ancient contract. This ancient attempt failed because Dig had tricked her. The ritual summoned the ancient god instead of killing people. Dig appeared out of nowhere with Heradric and Kresvold, safe after their escape from Heradric's burning. They implored the ancient god to help them correct the damage that had been done to the world, but he said that it was no longer his concern. But apparently he changed his mind because in the priest's signet movie, he was writing the ancient contract that would keep the walking dead in check and save the world. Peace, not war. Faith, not heresy. Freedom, not prisons. Forgiveness, not revenge. Hope, not despair. And the ships of the dead, not walking dead. The last part of the contract assured the eternal punishment of the truly guilty, presumably Jove and Lucius. This sparked Jerry's memory, and he raged about how the ancient god had turned King Jove into a walking corpse. He couldn't even kill himself. He could only drink the pain away. The final artifact was a brick from the church, so I went and grabbed it immediately. This scene showed the original church being built, with the world looking a heck of a lot more healthy thanks to the ancient god's contract. Chain arrived to ask Horadric if she could live in the village. He asked about Clotho, but Chain explained she needed to stay in the swamp because she's a a bit crazy. Heradric pleaded with her. Maybe after even all that had gone wrong, they could find a future together. And finally, Jerry remembered. He was the decapitated skull of King Jove. But he felt it was unfair. Why was he punished when it was Lucius who destroyed the bridge? Honestly, that's pretty weak, Jerry. Blame shifting when you were the king. But I came up with an idea to see one more flashback. We still had one remaining ancient artifact on our hands, Jerry himself. And so I placed the old talking skull into the machine. We were transported back five years before the ancient contract where King Jove and Lucius were enjoying a friendly bath. Jove masterminded the next step of the plan, to kill the master and use his martyrdom as the catalyst to take control as king and wage war on the ancient god. So yeah, it was definitely all Jerry's fault. Jerry was suitably sad to hear of how much of a giant turd he'd been 200 years ago, but on the plus side, he randomly remembered an ancient treasure trove he'd buried. I filled up the artifact display, went to church, and then dug up the treasure. It had 200-year-old elite wine in it, so Jerry was over the moon. He could really lean into drinking himself into oblivion so he never remembered how terrible a king he was. There was also 10 gold for me. I then randomly decided to build all these lanterns leading up to the quarry. I also built a third stone cutter and chucked a zombie on to break down stone, as this first guy was too flame and slow to keep up with demand. I refilled my embalming fluid shelf, modified a bunch of body parts, and resurrected zombie number 39 and 40, two 20 white skull zombies with 50% efficiency. I took these fellas up to the quarry and placed them on the marble quarry. I had heaps of marble stockpiled, but I had ambitions to make tons more grave decorations so I figured I might as well increase the rate of marble collection just in case. I also built three more trunks in the yard to make sure there was space for all the marble, and I queued up a bunch of wood wedges as these are used to break down marble chunks. I built the sword rack at the refugee camp, and the Marquis's next offensive build request was a watchtower. I crafted a bunch of plus 11 grave fences and began placing them, because I figured I might as well try and get the graveyard looking as pretty as possible. I paused a couple of times to deal with fresh bodies, but by day 300, well over half of the graves had fancy gold accented fences. I then finally had enough camp happiness to build the watchtower, and the Marquis was pleased. This was the ultimate completion of the camp, and he rewarded me appropriately. But his joy was short-lived, as he was informed a huge army was marching towards them, far bigger than they could possibly repel even with their new defenses. For my part, I was just happy that he'd given me a big universal bag. I returned home, and soldiers awaited me. I assumed they were to escort me to the mountain fort, but no, it was Lady Beatrice. She offered to save the refugees, in exchange for a dark and evil task. She wanted me to make her five emulsions of death, which she would use to turn the 
soldiers of the mountain fought into ghouls, undead creatures far more terrifying than mere zombies. She also revealed that she'd been watching my every move via that stinky stuff she sprayed on me the first time we met, and it was her who had ruined our efforts to restore Clotho's memory. Basically, I had three choices. I either help her by making the emulsions, I say I'm gonna help her but then betray her, or I refuse to help her. I immediately googled what the best option was, and realized that each choice resulted in different perks being awarded to the player. I wanted the industriousness perk, as that would increase my chance of making gold star marble statues, and so I agreed to help her. I made the most evil choice purely for selfish gain. I mean, so what if ghouls become a reality? It's not that big a deal. I put the emulsions onto the still, and while I was waiting, I healed her soul. When they were ready, I took them and gave them to Lady Beatrice. She was amazed I didn't betray her, but little does she know, I just really want that banger perk. She also promised that the refugees would be safe. I guess until the ghouls get bored and come to kill them. I waited around until the dawn of day 301. That's right, we've cleared 300 days, people. Have some bonus days. You're very welcome. And I told the refugees they were safe. I returned to the morgue and found three corpses and a note from Lady Beatrice. She said these three had refused to turn into ghouls, and so she wanted me to dispose of them. And I received the industriousness perk. And that was the end of the game of Crohn's DLC, by the way. A spicy tale that delved deeply into how the ancient contract was broken by Clotho 30 years ago. Except I don't think we ever worked out how to restore the ancient contract, and I just unleashed ghouls, so I think the world is screwed. Anyway, I then headed up to the portal with the six keys I'd finished collecting almost 100 days ago, and I finished the game. But I'm not going to show you that just yet, as I want to talk to you about what I did after beating the game. See, once you activate the portal, you can continue playing, which is what I did. From day 302 to 310, I worked on the graveyard. My ambition was to fill every single grave with 26 white skull corpses, and adorn every grave with max level decorations. I knew this would get the graveyard quality above 2000, and that sounded exciting to me. And so I spent 8 or so days crafting gold star chisels, with which I sculpted gold star marble busts, with which I crafted 15 star grave statues. I made the few remaining grave fences I needed too, and I began churning out as many 26 white skull corpses as I could. But I soon realized the grind was immense. I had to do each marble sculpture one by one, which was tedious, but the worst of it was the corpse prep. I had to modify body parts one white skull at a time, and this just took forever. I also would have had to sleep through day after day to keep the corpses coming, as I needed them for sin shards, and I would have had to embalm like 80 more corpses too. And so I got bored. I did at least place all the grave decorations so the place looked pretty, but I gave up on day 310 with a graveyard quality of 740. Anyway, let's backtrack to day 301, the day I beat the game. Craft the mirror. Craft the barrel. Oh! It's actually happening. All my new friends came to see me off, which was quite touching. love. So I was reunited with my one true love, just not in the way I expected. She came to our side instead of me returning home. And that was the end of the base game. But my love had one item from our world with her, so we placed that in the archaeological machine to see if we could learn anything. This is how it all started. Getting some milk. Dad's, Dad's getting some milk from the grocery store. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Gary and his teddy bear walking home. Do I get hit by a car? Is that what happens? Looking at my phone. Slip in the rain, get hit by a car. Oh, so this guy was the ancient god the whole time. Okay. Sort the wheat from the chaff. Oh, I got split in half. The aggressive side of me was sent to the town, and I was sent to the village. I never went to the town, and I guess that's why. I was already there in my aggressive form. I have no idea what the significance of this is, but it's pretty cool, I guess. And that bonus scene was the end of the Stranger Sins DLC, which added the tavern and the rich backstory as to how the world collapsed into ruin 200 years ago. But as for these 300 days, that's it. And we can only assume the Graveyard Keeper continued trying to fight off the ancient curse. I like to think he succeeded, but let's be honest, there are ghouls out there now, so he probably didn't. The main thing is, Jerry got his ancient wine. Oh, and here's a little bonus for you. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, I went and collected all my zombies. I think there's like 35 of them or something. Who knows? And uh, it's just a bit of a zombie slumber party. No big deal. Check out this epic 300-day movie of an insanely efficient...